All right. Welcome, guys and gals, to another edition of the Bo Payne Show podcast. I'm your host, Bo Payne, and I am so grateful to be bringing uh, a lot of knowledge to the microphone today. We have an incredible guest. I'm going to hold off a few minutes before I introduce my friend. I um, want to knock out a few uh, few minutes of the world in sports. Uh, but before we do that, I want to ask you to go to my YouTube page, The Bo Payne Show, uh, like, subscribe, hit that bell. Uh, you know, even if you don't like the show, subscribe to it. It helps us uh, helps us grow the algorithm and get more viewers. Uh, and also, wherever you get your podcast, Spotify, Amazon, Google Play, uh, what else? Uh, you guys know it, man. Spreaker. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. We would absolutely love it. We're building the show actually at a pretty good pace. I want to thank everybody out there really for uh, sticking with us. We've had a lot of loyal listeners and viewers, which is a uh, I feel is a good sign for the show, you know, not a lot of one and done. So I really appreciate the support. Um, we plan at the end of the year to take this uh, to pretty big heights. So thank you all for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and keep watching the show. So I want to introduce producer Brianna Miana Mina. How's your <laughs> week going so far? Really good. Just working a lot, you know, having fun, going hiking with the dogs and my husband. And it's just, yeah, you know, branching out a little bit and taking in the weather. It's changing. So it feels so nice. <laughs> Isn't that nice, though? Like uh, to just to, we were talking earlier, but to do like to become just really good friends with your significant other. Like I used to love hiking, you know, when I was married with my wife or just to do cool stuff together like that. And it, yep. it was just kind <laughs> of a, a booster to the relationship, you know, to get yeah, to know somebody really on that the spirit. <laughs> yeah. And, and kind of to get to know somebody on that that intimate level of. You know, like we were saying, in 30 years when, when everything falls off, you know, you still got your, your partner and, and uh, you know everything about them and you, and you all actually like each other. And that's yep. the cool thing. And so you can see that's a big one with me, too. I guess that's why I'm still single. I'm still working on being, being <laughs> friends with people. <laughs> but uh, I actually, I play well with others these days. Um, hey, tell us briefly about your YouTube channel. Everybody, Brianna has uh several about 19 no not 19 she's got four youtube channels and they're pretty incredible so before we get into it brianna tell us uh just briefly about each one and where we can find them yeah okay so if you just google my name brianna mina um you'll come up with the first one and that's really just based on you know the fact that i've been incarcerated for 10 years why being an advocate against drinking and driving also, I do a lot of collaborations with people who have a story similar, you know, to just trying to get through things and learning about forgiveness and getting a second chance and using that to its fullest. And then the other one is about, it's um, called True Crime for Life. And that one is just storytelling a little bit about, you know, solved cases, missing cases, you know, things that have happened, interesting cases. Um, two others are still trying to push off the ground. So it's called Life Behind the Lens. Okay. Yeah, and that one is going to be mainly about like theme parks and, you know, kind of cases that happen at places like that. And then the other one, I have just like a pet thing. It's um, Charlie and Simba or Simba and Simba and Charlie. It's my uh, dog and cat, just little fun videos. So, <laughs> right. Well, you Love got a lot you. of juggling yeah. a lot of balls in, in there yeah. at one time, but that's you're a multitasker. That's for sure. That's why yeah. I'm happy to have you producing my show. Uh, maybe you can talk to our guest a little bit after about life behind the lens. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so well awesome okay and and uh i can't compete with that i have one youtube channel and we're still growing so maybe i'll have four someday so all right guys i'm gonna break down um just about two or three minutes in the world of sports uh, i always debate in my head like when i start a new episode should i just go straight into it but i can't help it because i'm as big a sports junkie on planet earth as i think so you know i just love <clears throat> love sports it's uh everything to me so and in, in um uh, respect to our guest today too. I think he may have a little something, something to say about this stuff later on when we get into it. So uh, let's go quick. Baseball. I'm a uh, diehard Boston Red Sox fan, have been my entire life. Uh, I'm 50 years old. My first hero was Jim Rice. Uh, Larry Bird doesn't play baseball, obviously, but all Boston guys. Uh, we stink. I'm getting real tired of finishing last in the AL East. Uh, there is something about four uh, World Series rings in the 21st century that takes a little sting out of things. But I tell you, it's hard to see the Yankees and uh, other teams that are rivals spending all this money. And then the Boston Red Sox, our ownership the last handful of years has just stopped spending money. So uh, we've got a lot of young studs in the system. We have no pitching. I expect probably fourth place or 
Last place in the AL East. My prediction for the World Series this year is a Yankees-Dodgers World Series. Spent all that money, uh, got all that talent everywhere. So we'll see. But I'm excited about opening day. So let's get to a little bit of UFC. Uh, what did we have? We had Sean O'Malley fight Cheeto Vera. I can't remember who else. Oh, and Dustin the Diamond Poirier fought uh, Benoit Saint-Denis from uh, France. Uh, Poirier... All-time great, going to the UFC Hall of Fame, was a big underdog in this fight. Saint-Denis had finished his last five guys by knockout and submission, either or. And so uh, Dustin Diamond came into that fight, weathered a first-round uh, beat down by Saint-Denis. Like he does, he weathers a storm and then caught him with a left and then a right hook and, and knocked him out. So it was huge. And uh, UFC MMA fans around the world were really, really happy about that. So hopefully Dustin gets a shot at uh, Islam uh, Mahachev for the, I believe, lightweight uh, championship of the world. So we'll keep an eye on that. Maybe UFC 301 or so. Let's see. Sean O'Malley, uh, strange. And actually, he's cool, cool dude. I like Sean. He's he's eccentric. He's got, uh, I don't know about that pink hair and everything, but, you know, it works for him. So dominating performance against Cheeto Vera. Uh, just spanked him. Probably 50 to 44, you know, throwing a 10-8 round in there. And just fight was never close. It was actually just a clinical, beautiful beatdown is what it was. So, Happy about Sugar Sean. Uh, let's see what else we have. NCAA hoops. <clears throat> Excuse me. March Madness. This is exciting for me. My sister, head coach, most of y'all know, uh, University of Colorado Women's Hoops. Uh, this is the third consecutive year that my uh, baby sis, J.R. Payne, Coach J.R. Payne, has taken her team to the big dance. Uh, they got a five seed. Yeah, thanks, Brian. I know they got a five seed, so they play Drake. They open up with Drake. Uh, they should handle Drake. I think they have, if they beat Drake, probably K-State uh, in the second round. And then maybe a rematch with Iowa in the Sweet 16, who beat them last year by 10 in the Sweet 16. Uh, Caitlin Clark, when it's all said and done, my opinion, she's going to be the greatest college women's college basketball player that ever lived. She's just absolutely incredible. Great ambassador for the sport. Um, men's NCAA hoops. I got UConn. I guess I'm going chalk. Way to step out on a on a limb there, Bo, take, <laughs> taking the number one overall seed, or maybe Purdue is. Um, uh, my guest is going to like this. I have Iowa State as a big dark horse. Same conference as my guest, I guess. Or no, 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 different. Yeah. Big 12 and Big 10. My bad. But anyways, I have Iowa State uh, making a run. I have UK making a run, Kentucky. I think they're talented like that. I just inconsistent. But you get a team that's that's talented with good guard play in the tournament. Uh, they can go all the way. Uh, so Iowa State, keep an eye on them. Purdue, obviously, UConn, Arizona, <clears throat> extremely, extremely talented as always. And uh, let's go, man. March Madness. It's here. So I'm excited about it. Opening day for baseball. We got some good fights on the horizon. Uh, spring football is coming up soon. Roll Tide. We'll see how that goes with the new coach, with DeBoer. I think they'll be okay. But we're going to talk about a little Nikki Saban a little bit later on in the show today, too. I'm excited about that. So that's it for me in the world of sports. So, guys and gals, I usually, uh, I don't get too jazzed up. I mean, I do, you know, in front of, you know, names. I'm not really a big name dropper, you know, stuff like that. This guy, our guest, is is a friend. He's been a buddy for a few years. He's been instrumental in my life and my growth, uh, to which he knows. And, and, and I, I'll tell anybody that I'm very, very appreciative of the help that this man has extended me just in advice alone. And what a role model he is to uh, so many. This show obviously is about redemption. This show is about recovery. This show is about uh, just tough people walking through the fire and coming out the other side of it absolutely forged in the flames. And uh, if there ever was a guy who was about it, uh, this is the man. So seven-year NFL vet, uh, three-year hiatus in between the seven years. So I think the first four were with the Green Bay Packers and the last three we're with the Colts, um, and we're going to get into the reason for the little hiatus in between, which I think is very important to a lot of our guests. Um, but still, hey man, seven years in the NFL, you made it. You know, just that that's big time. That's big time. Uh, played with the the great Peyton Manning, too, and uh, and Don Mikowski, which I think we're going to have on the show here in a month or two. I need to reach out to Don. I know Don a little bit, too. Uh, this man right now is... To me, I pretty much world famous artist, you know, just went from 
amazing football player just straight into straight into art and if you'd see some of his work and we're going to pump his ig stuff and and where we can find his work and stuff like that again and before i introduce him i want to say this a lot of us myself included uh my producer my guest today <clears throat> a lot of people that are going to listen to this show that have been loyal listeners uh we've had things said about us that uh are true maybe we can't change the past okay we absolutely can't change the past, but we can change the present and we can change the future. And that's what's so beautiful about it. And this guest, uh, my guest today, has completely changed the narrative about his life. And uh, it's just amazing to see people, you know, walk through that fire, come out forged in the flames, change the narrative. And so instead of people saying so-and-so did this or so-and-so did that or you can't do this or you can't do that, they say so-and-so does this and it's amazing or <clears throat> this man or this woman does this and they help so many people and this and that. My guest is a philanthropist. Uh, he's a speaker. He's a keynote speaker. Um, his life really is about recovery. I'd say art and recovery and uh, talking a little football too on the side. So without further ado, the greatest offensive line prospect in the history of college football, Tony Mandarich. Welcome to the Bo Payne Show. How are you, my man? Well, it's great to be here. It's a pleasure and an honor to be on your show. And, um, Thank you for the introduction. It was, um, it, it, it was, it was, uh, hard to listen to, <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> I know you're a humble guy, man. So <laughs> I, I had to build you up, <laughs> but nothing, I, anything, I didn't say any non-truth. So no, man, you, you know I'm that good. Tony, yeah. it was just, it's just, it's just, sometimes you really, you know, I, I look back, you're 50, 57 years old now, and you look back at your life and it's like there's you know area sections of your life yeah you know and you're different you know you I, you're, you're just different you're just different sure. at, at one level whether it's high school whether it's college whether it's pro as far as sports go or just as a person in general and then you know and and we evolve um we hopefully evolve as far as growth goes and we look at our stuff and everybody's got stuff. Absolutely. Uh, you know, whether you're sober or not, everybody's got stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how do we handle that stuff? Because the stuff is unavoidable. The stuff is actually, actually one of the few guarantees in life is ever. It's life. Life yeah. lifes us, you know, yeah. for lack and of a better word. You know, you're going to have <laughs> adversity every single day. Some of it will be speed bumps. Some of it will be mountains. Mm -hmm. and how we look at it, how we handle it, is gonna is gonna really determine our our outcome on you know how our yeah. day goes or how our week goes or how our year goes. I love that, and and I you know I do speaking engagements and, and things like that. Uh, everyone knows that I was in prison for several years, and and I'll say this, uh, and then I'll quit pumping you up. But um, I think it was like 2017. <laughs> I was uh, in the penitentiary, and I had a few years to go or a couple more years. And Tony, you know this, but for our guests. Uh, I saw Tony's uh, E60 on ESPN. A little run, uh, I think it was about an hour long show, but it, but it just talked about really your life, you know, in football, and and, and it talked about um, you know some failures, some successes, you know, just everything that happened to you along the way. Uh, then it you know morphed into your present day career and what you're doing now. And so me seeing that, and me being as low as literally a human being can go in life, like a lot of us have, um, you know, especially intrinsically inside how terrible yeah. I felt about myself, you know, that just that, that pit of loneliness to see you, uh, you know, for me sitting in an eight by eight prison cell, I'm not, you know, not going home for whatever amount of years that gave me the impetus to start getting turning my life around. Cause I was like, well, if Tony can do it and I didn't know you at the time, but I said to myself, Tony can do it. I can do it too. And, uh, and I started adapting this, this kind of mantra where they can, you know, they can't take the, they can take your physical freedom in, in the pen, you know, but they can't right. take, uh, you know, what's between your ears. Right. And I think that's why I've, I've turned into a pretty mentally strong dude, you know, just by adapting that, uh, that philosophy. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you're right though. Life, you know, in the rooms we hear life, life's us, or, you know, or it's, it's always going to be there. And I think the big thing that I found out, Tony, and not just with me or you, with a lot of people in recovery, uh, going through tough times is, is just incredible. Like being there for someone who's passed away or, or, mm -hmm. you know, caring for a sick relative or, or just some really dire times in life and being able to show up 
instead of you know showing up late smelling like booze or, or just gone or not not you know what i mean and it's just yeah. like for me i get more satisfaction about how i feel about myself doing things like that because in the past i never did anything like that i was always the guy who didn't show up i was always the guy who was smelling like booze i was always you know just i was that yeah, guy yeah. and um looking back on it like you said you know just you know the evolution of i guess someone growing up you know i feel like i grew up in in prison i grew up in in sobriety so yeah, yeah man shoot that's awesome so uh before we get going i'm gonna ask to tell your story a little bit um 29 i'm not sure if i said this uh this saturday 29 years clean and sober yeah, march 23rd of 95 is my sobriety date it's incredible. Was oh, yeah. that it? Was that in between the uh the yes. pack and the Colts? It was, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was um I got sober eleven months before uh I signed with the Colts. So okay. I was out of the league. Like I was uh, officially officially out of the league, you know, over two years. And then that sober year, um, you know, I was still out of the league. Uh, yeah. although I was sober and getting my life back together somewhat. Um but I, you know, it was tackling that problem of, mm -hmm. of alcohol and, and opioid abuse and prescription drugs or whatever the drug was. Yeah. Whatever yeah, it was at hand. Oh, yeah. At hand. Yeah. Gosh, I can't even, I remember the doctor <laughs> shopping. I mean, for right. in my life, you know, and all right. that stuff, yeah, yeah. I would be at three or four different hospitals in one day back yeah. then, you know, and they could just write scripts like crazy. They're, they yeah. weren't, you know, nowadays they have to I think, call in. Right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I know. So, well, it's really, I, I tell you, it's really easy to get now, like 60 miles from here, from where uh -huh. I live. You just go to the border and you can get like stuff uh, for free, like not for free, but free yeah, handed to you, except it'll kill you. Oh, it's everything's laced with fentanyl, isn't it? I mean, it seems <laughs> like everything has fentanyl in it. It's just, yeah. you know, and I want to give a shout out real quick to one of our, um, one of our guys we lost in Boise, Idaho yesterday. His name is Shane Wood. He was a, friend of mine and a dear friend of so many in uh, the Boise recovery community. He helped me through some of my struggles. Um, so rest in peace, good friend. Uh, we all miss you very much, Shane. You were very instrumental in a, a lot of people's lives, uh, left behind a wife, uh, children. So uh, we'll keep you in our prayers. So uh, Tony, how about we just go kind of chronologically, you know, what it was like, what happened, and uh, yeah. what was the impetus to start turning your life around, and, and what it's like now, man. And we can just get well, into it. I'll ask a few well, questions, uh, you know, when I see fit, and we'll just absolutely. have a good conversation. So. Well, you know, and we'll go way back to where I grew up in Canada, just outside of Toronto. I was 11 years old, made it, kind of made a decision, didn't kind of, literally made a decision. Mm -hmm. So we're talking 1977, um, made a decision that I, I wanted to do that, what they do on TV. And it was what Detroit Lions were doing and what um, Buffalo Bills were doing because mm -hmm. we were, you know, within driving distance of them. And it wasn't, you know, something now like NFL Network and all these ESPN and everything like, you know, just you regional watch. stuff. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. It was regional. And, and, but I knew that I wanted to do that. And, I would spend hours and hours and hours with my buddies in the neighborhood playing in the, in the park, playing just football, mm. um, you know, obviously non-contact and, and, and two hand touch, whatever. And, but it was, it was something I absolutely loved to do. And really most of the major decisions that I made from that, from that point on were, there was like a voice in my head that said, you know, does this help you? achieve your goal now there's mm -hmm. a lot of steps in between that goal to get sure. to the NFL. um but i it, it was just really weird for me to write the stuff down at 11 because when i look at an 11 year old now pretty young pretty yeah. young kid and and i and i just wrote you know to work out but to work out at 11 years old you know my brother was five years older and he was smart enough to know you don't want to lift with weights at 11 because you, you know, you're still developing, you're still growing push-ups, plyometrics, mm -hmm. play soccer. You know, I played soccer for eight years, organized Get your cardio soccer. in. Yeah, yeah. Just everything just, you know, and then movement, you know, in soccer, you're moving, sure. You know, stopping on the dime, moving left, moving right, back mm -hmm. pedaling, doing all that stuff. So I started to do all that. And when I got to high school, uh, I played three years at, at, a, at a high school in Canada in the same town where I grew up. Okay. 
and that at that time we're talking like 81 to 83 okay um you know no i don't want to say nobody but like hardly anybody was recruiting in canada mm -hmm. now they recruit a lot more um and then my brother and i decided because he had gotten a half scholarship to kent state university in yeah kent. i thought he was with the the flashes yep but, or... so he he had had the idea and ran it by me he said why don't we talked to mom and dad and said, have you come down here and live with me in Ohio, go to Kent Roosevelt high school and <clears throat> try to get exposure from college uh -huh. scouts to get recruited, to make it to, you know, the next step to play college football at a, at a big place. Preferably. Yeah. D one, preferably. Yeah, preferably. And, and we did all that. And luckily, um, we had like four or five people on at the high school team that were like five star recruits. Like oh, wow. where scouts were coming in from all over the country to watch, which was good for me because now people could say, Well, who's this guy? If, you know, I could, you know, play and, and perform. Mm -hmm. and, and then Michigan State, Nick that was Ohio was uh Nick Saban's area, and that was um and Nick Saban was very good friends with my high school head coach John Nemec, Coach John okay. Nemec. Kent Roosevelt ended up talking and and took a visit to state and decided that that would be the it was a good fit most of their offensive line was juniors going into their senior year um it worked out well uh went to Michigan State played five years or redshirted played four years there mm -hmm. you know now there I'll I'll say you know I made some personal bad decisions on taking uh steroids which mm -hmm. they i don't even think they had the phrase peds at that time i don't think so either i i didn't hear peds until yeah. like five years ago right <laughs> it was either the juice or yeah now they call it gear now they call it sauce. yeah are and you like, running well, gear that's what right, they say right, you know right. <laughs> you know so i'm you know, it's kind of like I've been so removed from it. I'm like, what do you like? First time I heard gear, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, is it a Nike Nike pullover, or what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> or is it like, am I riding a ten speed? Or yeah, it's, exactly. I know. Like, is it an eighteen gear, a ten gear? What? <laughs> oh, you know, it's funny how that whole slang and that that uh, yeah, kind of like unspoken. Word, we used to call it the juice, right? Sure. Yeah, and um. So, you know, I, I started doing that. I, I started doing it because I felt that it was the it was really the only way. And, and this is really interesting looking back now. I thought it was the only way to get to the NFL because in the NFL, everybody's doing it, which was not the case. It was not the case, but you're made to believe because you see these monsters, believe. you know. And then if you're a huge Steelers fan in the 70s. Oh, gosh. I mean. Jack Ham, Jack Lambert, Elsie right. Greenwood. You know, Mike, yeah. Mike Webster. Webster. Uh, Webster. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You know, oh, the boy, whole that was a tough time. one. I mean, they were awesome. And I, and I don't know if they did anything, uh, you know, but. Oh, you would be looking at the O-line guys yeah. for the Steelers. Yeah. Okay. So obviously Mike Webster. Yeah. Mike geez, Mike what a, yeah. And that's so a was, sad, was, sad story. In and, and I was, it is yeah. a sad story. And, um, I was lucky enough to work out with him once. Cool. Um, cool. But the thing was, it's, I kind of got that tunnel vision of this is the only way to the NFL. And yeah. look, these guys have won four Super Bowls out of six years mm -hmm. and in the, you know, seventies, mid to late seventies. And, and that was like steroids were, you know, predominantly, I mean, I, should, I shouldn't say predominantly, they were used a lot in the mm -hmm. NFL. They were used a, they were used a ton in college. I mean, you look at Lyle Zato and, and the Raiders guys and uh, Matuzak, I think, and, you know, I mean, it's yeah. some wild I mean, ones. <laughs> you can make a, a whole list of, of people. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, it's it, and, the, and the NCAA rules said, obviously, you can't, do mm. drug. you can't do steroids and stuff like that and i knew that mm. and i i defied it i i sure. didn't you know i was like well i'm gonna do it secretively and and because i want to get to the next level yeah um which had been your goal since an 11 year old correct yeah <laughs> correct so we're going after this full board one way or the other exactly we're, we're either we're either gonna you know fall flat on our face or we're gonna make it and yeah you know crazy thing is you make the decision at 11 
and then you're drafted second overall like 10 years later, 10, 11 years later, mm -hmm. which is not a very long time. No, it's not. You know, it's really not a long time um, for like like that huge, like a dream, like just literally. That's a pretty quick route to, I mean, it, it let me right? jump in here just real quick about your draft. I want to tell our viewers um, to get drafted second overall, the second overall pick, uh, guys, that's like, that's like legendary status, you know, in, in the NFL. It's like Peyton Manning stuff and just, you know, Randy Moss stuff, stuff like that. I mean, it's, I can't, you know, really recall any O lineman, maybe Jonathan Ogden stuff. Tony Baselli maybe was a high draft yeah. pick, but, but that's just some really intense. Orlando, Orlando you know. plays from Ohio oh, State. Oh, yeah, Ohio that's drafted. right. Ohio um, State, right? Uh, yeah, he was an OSU guy. Yeah. Um, there was, there was a lot of, there was a lot of great players. Like a big idol of mine was John Hanna, who played. Oh, Patriots. hey, that right. perfect, perfect segue, guys and gals, <laughs> Patriots. Got Gronkowski here from my buddy Tony. We don't switch teams. Right. Four and thirteen, but I'm loyal. Okay, right. sorry, I had to but get yeah, that in there. John Hanna, John Hanna from that. Alabama. He was a huge like influence. I never met the guy. Never talked to the guy in my life. Um, yeah. but he was a huge influence uh -huh. on. You know, I looked at that kind of a player, and I was like, oh, "That is a football player." And, Absolutely. You know, so <clears throat> shouldn't have. You know, I should. I, I did them. I, I I broke the rules and never got caught um, because I did things that I knew how not to get caught. Sure. Yeah. Um, which is wrong. It's wrong to do. Um, I don't. Con I don't condone. I don't recommend anybody do it. Yeah. I, I. I don't. Um, I think the game has also changed a lot. I'm not sure that there's as much use as there was in college uh, when mm -hmm. I played. And, and when I say college, I'm not talking about just where I went to college. I'm not talking about just the Big Ten. I'm talking about all of college football. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, anyone who denies that is... It was is, rampant. And, and, yeah. and that doesn't mean everybody was taking it, but it's just that it was very readily talked about among players. Now, did you have, um, Tony, did you have coaches that, willfully turned a blind eye and i don't mean specific coaches i mean or, or let me let me rephrase my question do you believe that there were coaches around the country in, in any program that would just willfully turn a blind eye if say so and so is just absolutely mauling people or he's going to the next level and you know um it's kind of like accepting money i guess like the reggie bush yeah. thing and stuff like that i mean but, i i, I uh... I would imagine, I would almost think it'd be impossible not to have. Yeah, because you, you have to see somebody's quick growth, you know, yeah. going from. You know, I can only speak from my experience and the the coaches that I dealt with, um, you know, one on one or, or just dealt with in our organization at Michigan State. I mean, I don't think that they knew. Um, yeah. You know, I don't think that they turned a blind eye. Good. I was actually pulled into the trainer's office um, by the two head, it was like two head trainers. Mm -hmm. and they told me about the consequences of steroid use and and i don't want to say they accused me of it but they said you know but they did it in a very nice professional way talking sure. to a kid right mm -hmm. and they're saying you know we've seen a big change in you in the last 12 months yeah <laughs> you know 70 pounds of muscle or, or I'm, well, I'm just throwing that number out there but it, even even 30 40 pounds of muscle mm -hmm. and your strength and like your you bench were, and your and your, your, bench. your compound lifts probably went through the roof too yeah. yeah and then and then transferring that onto the field right yeah and so yeah it raised some eyebrows i was enough so that the trainers pulled me in and talked to me about it and they're like well, look is, this is a friendly conversation we're not accusing you but we are suspecting and you know, I sat there and I listened and I was respectful, uh, but it was pretty much an eye roll for me. And, mm -hmm. you know, I remember them saying, you know, just think about things like, um, you know, when you're 40 years old, like the consequence, the health consequences. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself. I'm thinking about going to the NFL. Like, I ain't thinking about 40 years old. I was <laughs> thinking to myself, 40? I'm yeah. not going to make it to 30. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm living uh, hard and fast, you know? Yeah, yeah. And God, you know, that true? their intentions were great. Um, but if somebody doesn't want to listen, it oh, doesn't matter. So. It's like talking to a wall, right? And and I wasn't I, I wasn't, you know, yet into the opiates or I wasn't I mean I partied some in, mm. in college, but 
my I went to college for a purpose for Play to, football, to make yeah. it to the next level and to get an education. Get, sure. Okay. And, you know, yeah. I mean, and, and you know, did you graduate MSU? I can't. No, I just graduated a year and a half ago. Ah! Yeah, yeah. I went back. Uh, I did an online. I, I was five classes short when I left. Okay. I, I did two semesters online. Um, you know, a year and a half ago, and yeah. well, I graduated. I Congratulations, figured- Brianna. We need an applause button yeah. here for the show. Yeah. Like when somebody's, you know, we need like ah, like it lights <laughs> lights up on the sitcoms. It's applause. Nice. But it's funny. <laughs> it's funny when I think about stuff like that because it's like, why should I be applauded for something I should have finished thirty years ago? <laughs> it's true, but I mean, you know, you but, but at least, you know, at least you, you went, I went back. But you went back and that's a that's a conscious decision that you made that like we talk about the evolution of of our character in sobriety. Yes. yes. And that's an evolution of your character. Yeah. You know, because if, I, if you're I, an active addiction, yeah. you're not going back to finish your degree. No, I'm not. No. I'm not you, you know, so I always had that the phrase of, you know, school will always be there. You know, I can always go back. And yeah. and there I was, you know, 20. 25 years later, sober, thinking to myself, well, school's still there. Still there. <laughs> you went back to right or wrong. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and, that's and a good point, Brian. You know, kind of complete something I started that that hopefully, even if one person mm-hmm. in any sport, whether they're male or female, doesn't matter what school they go to, and I don't care if it's uh, getting a GED in high school, I don't mm-hmm. care if it's completing college, I don't care what it is. If you've started something and committed to something, you should finish it. Absolutely. And I want to jump in real quick on that and just piggyback because I think that's, you know, not just in, it's huge in sports, obviously, but a lot of our listeners are in recovery. Maybe they're not, haven't made the decision to become in recovery, thinking about it, curious about it, what have you. Uh, for me, Tony, I was always a guy and, and I'm no different than most alcoholics and addicts that never finished a, a darn thing. You know, I, I, I was drafted by the Florida Marlins, you know, right. contra brewers, you know, just stuff like that. But I ended up getting a GED and a state pen. Right. Um, you know, I got kicked well, out of school. You know what? There's, there's, there's merit to that. Yeah. And that's what I'm getting. It's like, you know, being, you know, uh, incarcerated. Mm-hmm. It's like, there is merit. You're not sitting there feeling sorry for yourself. You're doing something about it already. hundred percent. Yeah. And I, and when my life started to turn around, I, I ditched that victimhood mentality, you know, mm-hmm. like, like I think people can be victimized. Obviously people can become victims, but if we, if we just sit in that stuff and, and let it just encompass everything about us, we're just doing nobody a favor ourselves or no. So I just, I, you know, I, I looked at it as a thing. And what I'm getting at is this, like the, the whole completion thing. Um, I didn't complete school. Like I'm just saying before I got the GD and stuff, you know, right. I didn't complete, you know, I got kicked out of the army three and a half years into my four year enlistment. I was a great soldier. I mean, right. I knew everything in the field, you know, and right. when we were out, I was in the infantry, but um, when we were back in, we call it garrison or the rear, when we weren't training, I was drunk 24 seven. And right. uncle Sam politely asked me not to reenlist. You know? right, 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 right. But my point is I never finished anything, right. anything. And so for me and anyone listening out there to, to hear Tony talk about going back and finishing, getting his degree, um, just the smallest stuff that we can, we can finish on a daily basis uh, are, are victories, you know, and yeah. me, I look back on my day and say, what did I, you know, like review my day, 86, 87, you know, stuff yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. but yeah. where was I wrong? Where do I own apology? Can I, what can I do better? And a lot of stuff that makes me feel good about myself these days is that, like you said, uh, when I commit to something, I'm going to finish it, you know, yeah. and that's just yeah. a big, big thing that alcoholics and addicts were not very good at, you know, when we were in active yeah. addiction. And, you know, yeah. and, that's, and that's why, you know, they have step work. Um, yes. Step work is, it helps us change and, and change who we are. And, and then, you know, it, it's interesting because there's, there's, there's all levels of sobriety. Mm-hmm. You know, there's all levels of growth. There's all levels of, and we and we see it everywhere in the world, uh, everywhere in our country. Every, every meeting we've ever gone to, we see the the, you know, especially the, you know, if we go to meeting the regular meetings we go to, we see the yep. person who's all they do is go to meetings, right? They don't do step work, but don't do any work in between. But they don't yeah. do any work, right? Yeah. And then you see that really there's not much change over the years. 
Um, and then you see people come in and do steps and then, and then they kind of will maybe stop going or they'll stop doing and you kind of, not all the time, but mm. a lot of times, sometimes you'll see them go back out and, and, and you know, my story in, in my opinion, mm -hmm. Well, actually, yeah, in my opinion and in my experience, my story, my personal life story has gotten more interesting to me in the last three and a half years than it has my whole life. And, and, and why so, do you think? Because the growth, personal growth through step work and or it, it there's been a lot of change. There's been okay. a lot of change with me, um, which we could call growth um, change for the better, I believe. OK, Um I don't want to say I know, but I can see the change is better. Sure, yeah. Um, but there was a huge catalyst. To, there was multiple catalysts to that. And and a lot of those catalysts happened in 2020. Okay. And, you know, without going into too much detail about the world and about other catalysts that happened that year, something in, for the first time, you know, in that time, you know, it was 54. Three, 54 years old right? kind of when covid hit is what yeah, was going and, on that time and right i was like okay so this is pretty like crazy right this is like what yeah. like black plague must have been this is like really early before we knew anything right like like we really didn't know right i remember the first time i, I found out is when they canceled an nba game i was watching it do you remember and, that and, and then i think the next day they canceled the they, they the, shut the season the march down. madness or march madness yes. yeah yeah and yeah. When, when they did that i was like oh like this is serious this, yeah yeah you cancel <laughs> there's the, a lot know, of revenue march, there march madness is <laughs> all about money <laughs> i was gonna say it's it's as american as american gets and that goes that's all about money and michigan state always does well in the yeah team. izzo had them in, so, i mean right. I, izzo actually 25 years straight longest team tournament appearance consecutive 25 years this year <laughs> so we'll see. i remind Man. a lot of people of that yeah it's a pretty impressive Which stat crazy. that's a crazy statistic it's in God. I mean, you think all the competition, too, yeah. you know, exactly. the Big Ten, and then yeah, the, and now the Big Ten has become the Big Twenty Two or big whatever Twenty Two. Yeah, it's so weird for me to think of SC yeah. and the Big Ten for football. Yeah. It's just so strange. Yeah. But but, but the, hey, uh, you yeah. were talking just about kind of catalysts. I, mm -hmm. Interesting to hear about what was uh, a yeah, catalyst yeah. for you, and, and it's two thousand twenty, kind of in the last few years yeah. of, of in personal growth. Twenty. The uh, first we had the catalyst of the. Uh, this is either going to help or hurt your ratings. Nah, it's uh, okay. The, I don't the, mind. The pandemic. Yeah, no, you're um, fine. You're fine. Let her rip, Tom. You're, you're good. <laughs> this is strictly my opinion. That's okay. You don't even have to put a disclaimer on it. All welcome. <laughs> all opinions are welcome on the Bo Payne and Show podcast. Uh, I didn't. I didn't look at it that way until time started to go by. Yeah. Um. I was like. Look, I think the thing really does exist. I think the thing really does. We didn't know much about it. Um, going back to what we spoke about 10 minutes ago, how we reacted to it. Yes. Is really kind of was a red flag to me. Huge. And, and I was like, you know, well, it's like I, in some ways I can see like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of revenue to be made by certain pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. and industries. And then there's, you know, stuff over here, but it, it still is killing people. But so is ammonia with people yeah. who are older. And so is a lot of other stuff. And I'm not a denier. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. No, I'm I know a, you're not. I, I would say that you're, you're, a, you're a, just about logic. I'm, a, I mean, I'm about, you know, critical thinking. Um, do your research. And um, hear both sides of the story for sure. Yeah, and I for think there sure, was no hear both sides of the story. And you talked to critical thinking. I think that the correct me if I'm wrong, but I think critical thinking went out the back door on both sides, the left well, and the right. And, and I think that, if you, you come know, out now and say critical thinking, you're a racist. Complete, um, and you're labeled that too, and, and it's you're, sad. And you're a you're a election denier, and you're yeah. you're labeled all these things, and it's like no. It's like it's like stop for a second. I know. I, it's <laughs> and, it's insane. You know, and it's it, it, you know this whole the whole thing with the protests that happened that uh -huh. year, uh, multiple protests were kind of like wow, like you know, like 
Of course I'm against police br brutality. It's the obvious well, that we all are, right. but they would use it I'm and against, weaponize it. Of course I'm against people being killed, innocent people being killed as casualties yeah. of war in Gaza. Of course I'm against that. Mm -hmm. Of course I'm against poverty. Of course I'm against a lot. But it's like, you know, you can spin stuff in the media or as a person and make it sound like you are pro killing and pro or an anti-vaxxer or anti that or anti that. So a lot of things were going sideways and I was observing them and it was mm. a fascinating time. It, it was, I think we lived in a, we live in a fascinating time, especially if you sit back and observe people, yes, how things are being done. Um, I have, I have, really found it interesting to see some people that I know very well, like just lose their shit. I completely, <laughs> it's insane. And I'm like people that like I felt were solid, solid foundation, had common sense and were critical thinkers. Um, and, and I didn't really kind of look at the people that way. I just was just like, that's, that's the salt of the earth person. Yeah. They're grounded. Like that's, those are the kind of people you want to hang around with. And then, you know, 2020 happens, 2021 kind of bleeds into 2021. <clears throat> and these, you know, and I haven't, you know, seen some of these people in a while and we, and we just sit down and we BS and some of these people are talking and I'm thinking to myself, am I, <laughs> is this the same person that I, yeah, know? it's like, did, is this the dude I knew I've known for 20 years? <laughs> because I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm a constitution guy. Um, but that doesn't mean that I love Trump's narcissism. You know, I, I wish he could, I, man, I wish he could have toned his narcissism down about 70%. He would have got reelected so much. Like that's, that's the thing. Again, yeah. My opinion. No, 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 you're, you're fine, Tony. And, and as an, as I guess, I'm just going to say an outside observer. I think that that's what that's what hurts them every single yeah. time is yeah, the narcissism because I think people yeah. for the, the majority, even Democrats, a lot of Democrats, yeah. I'm not going to speak for people on, on the show, but from what I see is that a lot of people prefer his policies, but yeah. they just absolutely hate the man, yeah. you know, yeah. and he lost the, yeah. the, the suburban mom vote, the, the, yeah. you know, he, he lost yeah. a lot of the minority vote. Um, yeah. So we'll see what happens, but I, I agree yeah. with you hundred percent. And, 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 and I'm about, um, Everybody should be treated fairly, mm -hmm. but not everybody should be treated equally. And I think that there are processes in place um, that are in place that make common sense that are moral laws. And yeah. so, you know, and, and I could give so many examples, but basically to encompass, and I could say so many more things about. Oh, yeah pronouns and stuff like that. And it's, uh, I, I think I've only had, <clears throat> I know I've only had, I've had one encounter with a person who it was at a charity event and they, mm -hmm. they went, I, I don't want to, maybe they didn't go out of their way, but they kind of made sure to let me know that it, to refer to them as a certain pronoun. Sure. Sure. And, and I'd been keeping my mouth shut pretty much the whole time. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I thought to myself, okay, if, if, if you want me to call that you, that pronoun, then you have to, my pronoun is master. You have to call me master. Yeah. Mr. Tony or, or yeah, just, yeah, sure. I just like, got just off the top of your head. Yeah. Quick, right. Yeah. yeah. And, and this girl looked at me like I was insane. And, and I looked at her and I said, do you see the stupidity in what I just said? Sure. And I said, do you see the stupidity that you just said? And, They're not and, willing to no, accept went, their you know, side. Stomping off. She went stomping yeah. off. And, and it's like, well, that's not critical thinking there. That's not and being able to debate anymore. Exactly. That's not being rational. And Yeah, let me jump in here real quick. So the stomping off <clears throat> for me, and, and one, of the, one of my resolutions – turn back the clock a few months ago was not to get into any debate with sports. I don't really talk politics mm -hmm. on, on social media, but I talk a ton of sports and we've become so tribal to where people just uh, 
you know, revert or they go back to their own little tribe. They lob insults at the other person, <clears throat> excuse me, talking points. You know, they don't yeah. really know yeah, how yeah, to debate yeah. or have civil discourse yeah. or anything like that. But yeah. the other side feels offended. So they lob their talking points back to the other. And, and it just becomes so divided. And there's no like on social media when people don't want to debate, but they, they just instantly discredit your opinion by just putting a, like a laugh emoji on, on your right. opinion. And, right. and that's to say like what you had to say is so preposterous. I, I, it's just ridiculous. I'm laughing at you making fun of you. And it's, and it's like, for me, I realized that on social media, Tony, I will very rarely, if ever be able to have a good debate where I, I can I mean, possible. I mean, it's possible, but I mean, it's just, you've got to find the right people that are willing right. to do it. And I, and when I finally, you know, when I find people that, that I could have a debate on, whether it's politics or sports or, you know, policies, things like that, yeah. especially of the 21st century, or even, you know, today it's yeah. fun because I usually come out learning some stuff that I didn't know either. And that's yeah, the big one is that I had to learn yeah. to keep my ears open to be like, all right, Bo, uh, you, you, you think, you know what you know, but let's hear this person out and then mm -hmm. let's, you know, rebut back or whatever and have a conversation. And when I have somebody willing to engage with me like that, I always end up, I feel the better person myself, you know, or, or, right. or a better person right. from having had a nice yeah. talk like that. Does yeah, that make sense? I've, you know, I've always learned, like I've always, yeah. I mean, I have my certain ways of looking at things mm. and, and, and I know that I'll, like I'm a, I'm a fallible man. Like, you of know, course. I have, I make mistakes. This is what works for me. This is what doesn't work for me. This is sometimes worked for me, whatever. But whenever I get into a debate or a discussion, um, say in person with one-on-one -on -one or in, even in a smaller group, uh -huh. it doesn't have to be anything about sobriety. Um, I have found, like I've gone into the, into the discussion or debate with an open mind of being like, what can I learn from these people that I don't know? Because I might be wrong. That well, that's, so, that's right yeah. off the bat. That's the, what we all should be going into a debate or right. discussion with. It's like, right. what am I going to learn? It's could, like, yeah. I'm going to, now it's like, I'm going to dig my heel. Like, I'm not saying me, I'm just saying, yeah, no, I got oh, you. It's like society has dug their heels in and digging said, in and I ain't giving yeah, ground. That's right. And we're yeah. going to fight to the death for it. And it's like, well, that that's just not morally right. And it's just not more, it's just not the way we're created. And, exactly. And well, it doesn't do anybody any good. It just creates no. more division. And, right. And, and then the division. Uh, so getting back to. Uh, you did say a word divided, which I think is a key word. It, mm -hmm. Divided and divided division and divisiveness and dividing people. Sure. I think has. Has been. In to some degree. Done on purpose. Um, I would not argue that point. I, I, I believe yeah. it's. I, I believe it's kind of like there's, there's, like, some something standing. Go ahead, you're you're point. good, man. Just let her rip whatever's on your mind. Standing back, saying, "Let them kill each other," yeah. right? Because we will survive. These other people that I don't want to talk about. Um, I call them puppet masters, so that's yes. what I'm calling them. And I'll say and, it right there. <laughs> and then in in that. In that 2020, 2021 year, I started to see things that were not just like weird and totally against my grain of belief, but th that were for the first time I was starting to see like evil, like yeah. malice, malicious, nefarious stuff being done on, on purpose. <laughs> and that's the part. And that was like probably the biggest catalyst. For me, to do something that I've done my whole life, when things get complicated, when I try to get too fancy on the football field with my uh -huh. footwork and stuff, mm -hmm. bring it back to fundamentals. Bring it back to like just yes. block and tackle, just block and tackle, just keep practicing blocking yeah. and tackling, just keep it fundamental. So for myself, in that situation, I went back to the fundamentals. And I asked myself, well, where's my authority of truth come from? Mm. Where do I draw my authority of truth? That's a huge well, question. 
for me, it was easy. It was like, well, it's the Bible. For okay. Me. And uh, so instead of reading the Bible, mm -hmm. I bought a study Bible. And I started to like, so you'd have the Bible and then you'd have the interpretation. And I, yes. So I, I, so then, you know, you get into all these things. So I did speak to some people that were, I was, cause I was like, I want to, you know, do this and I want to do it because under, you know, I'm under the Christian umbrella. Uh huh. Uh, you know, I was born and raised Roman Catholic. Um, mm -hmm. and I would have said I was Roman Catholic all the way till end of 2020. And now I would not say I'm Roman Catholic anymore. The Catholic and Church has changed a lot. The Church has changed. Um, the progressive Pope has, has the, had a it's, big. It's it's and it's not just you know Rome. It's a lot of yeah other you're religions right. too. And it's there, there's just I always want to go back to the Gospel and the Bible. And so I was lucky enough to to seek out and surround myself with certain pastors. Okay. We go back to the teaching of the word of God, the gospel, not what Joe says, not what this um, mega church says, not what this Vatican says. Mm -hmm. Let's see what God says. And just kind so, of take the, the religion, the religiosity out of it and, and exactly. just kind of get so into, yeah. So really the, you know, the church is Christ. It's sure. not the building. It's Christ. Now, Show me in the, you know, you'll hear me, not on this show as much, but you'll hear me in daily life. If somebody says something that's really weird and they're kind of dug their heels on, I'll be like, and I don't, I approach it with grace and as much grace as I can have. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, going to be a lifelong task, but it's, yeah. I try to approach it with the grace and understanding of, I really didn't know that. Can you please show me where that is in the Bible? And if they say, well, the Bible has been embellished, the Bible has been written so many times, you know, different times because it was Greek and Hebrew and this and yeah. that. And then now you have all this and you have Old Testament. Some people don't believe in the New Testament and this. Uh -huh. Well, once I started reading and studying um, and I've, and I'm, you know, two and a half years of, pretty ser for me serious studying of the bible yeah. i've got the i have a good grasp on the what i call the closed book arguments like the okay. non-negotiable things about god sure okay for me um for me i felt i was lucky that catholicism did believe in the trinity mm -hmm. and you know god the father the son and the holy spirit yep. all representing himself in three different persons, but being still only one God, a hundred percent of the time. So, you know, and that goes into, you know, Trinity and defining the Trinity. Well, then you'll have people, well, the word Trinity is not mentioned in the Bible. And yeah. Like, there's well, always I'm, the I'm little like, okay, well, I'm not here to debate that because that is my belief. Cause there's so much proof of it in the Bible. Yeah. And so, and again, these are, my experiences in the last two and a half years and I've and I've just come to find out that at a certain level of everything I've been lied to um maybe not maliciously maybe and I would say definitely like my mom and dad loved me and they did the best they could and I'll tell you what they were freaking awesome parents yeah um yeah. My mom was one of the toughest people I've ever known in my life. Um, and and yeah. I'm not talking tough to go into a bar and like fight tough. No, I, I know. Tough as far as resilience and endurance. Grit. And I feel grit. that way about my mother too. She, yeah. yeah. So and, I, I and, understand. And, you know, and my and my dad was too. And um, but you know, it, they were you know they escaped communism in 1955 from Yugoslavia from. And they they escaped to that's the Iron Austria. Curtain back then. I mean, right, that's, exactly. Yeah. And so they escaped to Austria, and they stay in a in an Austrian refugee camp, which for nine months, which is really the stay in Mexico policy. Mm -hmm. okay? It's the same thing. Same thing. 
they accept there's no internet. So they have to wait nine <laughs> months to get cleared. So Canada, where they're going, checks to make sure that they're not criminals and that they're not, you know, yeah. crazies or bringing any diseases over and all this mm -hmm. stuff. And then they got on the boat, they got cleared, got on the boat, and Canada welcomed them with open arms. And that's how, you know, Canada was built on immigrants. That's what yeah. America was built on, immigrants. What's happening What's happening now, or what's happened in the last, say, 10 years, especially in the last four, is not how America was built. No. It, it, and 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 it's it's like it's hard to talk it's hard not to mention that stuff because i'm not being political i'm trying to be follow the moral law sure and you know and now i'll I'll go back and, and i'll think when i was a kid like america was like if you want to make it you got to go to america you gotta go to the That's u.s baby place to be i mean yep. that is and canada was great I love Canada. If you were, yeah. if you wanted to make it in hockey, Canada was a place to be. I lived in Vancouver from age five till fifteen, uh, okay, so, so I, yeah. I get it. You know, you know. I mean, I, I'm a U.S. citizen, but I right. spent good good amount of time in up, up so, north. So. Uh, you know, and I was like, if you're gonna make, especially with football, I was like, if you're gonna make it, you gotta go to the NFL. Yeah. Oh, get a scholarship America, right? and get to the U.S. and then get yeah. to the league. Yeah. And and w the one thing I remember specifically that I absolutely loved about America was the patriotism how yeah. much they loved their country. And we didn't have that in Canada. I mean, and that's not to say that Canadians don't love their country, but in Canada, people love where they came from first. Like, so my parents came from Yugoslavia, which was a country where they escaped from, but they were really from Croatia, which is now a country into itself, along with four uh -huh. other countries in addition to them. Yeah, Bosnia. All made up Yugoslavia. Uh-huh. So it's like a Croatian Canadian or uh, I was going to ask you if, if you're Croatian. Yeah. Because you know, I know the yeah. Yugoslavia split and I, yeah. You know. yeah. So, okay. so it's, but it, Canada never had that patriotic, like they are patriotic, but they're not mm -hmm. patriotic like the U S and it's, you know, it's a younger country and it's way less population. Like, Oh yeah. Well, I don't, is there like 40 million in 40 Canada million? maybe? And there's we 40 have, million in the state of California. So, I mean, right. And we have 350, 360. Well, maybe, yeah. now we have, maybe now we have 400. We're close to four now, probably. <laughs> <laughs> by the end of the show, by the end of the show, we'll be up to 420 or 410 or whatever. <laughs> Sorry, bad joke. Bad well, joke. It's true. It's, well, it's, it's true, it's, though. I mean, miles from the border here. I know. Oh, yeah. You're, yeah. 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 So, and you know what? I, I truly believe that most of the people, most of the people crossing the border are looking for a better life. Yes. I yeah. truly believe that. But there's a good segment of people, and I have no proof of anything, but I also use common sense and critical thinking. There's a lot of people coming. There's a lot of people in the world that hate the U.S. Um, yeah. There's a lot. Of, and there's Heavy a, lies and, the crown, man. It's yeah, respond, and, what, you know. and what makes it even worse is there's a lot of people in the U.S. that hate the U.S. That hate the U.S., yes. And what it stands for and what it was and its history. And it's like, you know, the U.S. abolished, I mean, slavery. That's why we had a civil war. Okay? A, I was just going to say we fought a civil war, right? lost more American citizens in that war than in yeah. any other history yeah. of the world combined. Yeah. Yeah. And we and, fought for the, the abolition of, of slavery. And, and we won. And then, yes. the, you know, the North Absolutely. Won. You know, you have the Constitution and the, you know, I... I I think the Constitution's a great thing. And Me too. I love all the stuff, but then I have to go to a higher authority. I, I, I abide by the law. I abide by the Constitution. Yeah. But I have to, when I hit my knees, I don't pray to the Constitution. And no, I, no. I don't pray, I, I pray to the, I pray to God. I pray to God. And, and, I, and I had to personally, I had to define who God, like, I had to d define my understanding of the, yeah. the truth of what God is. And that's what I wanted. Go, I want to let you finish, but I want to talk about that in a little bit, at, just shortly about anyone who's listening who may struggle with that kind of problem in recovery and how you came to actually find a, a rock solid definition and yeah. how so, you learned to rely yeah. on God. You know. Yeah. So my, you know, like I mentioned earlier, being born and raised 
Roman Catholic, I always believed in God. Even in, in the darkest moments of my addiction, I believed in God. And I, Me too. And I, didn't, and I still, and I didn't blame God. Yeah, I never did I, either. Was just, I, I just was like, okay, this is the deal you get. And, you know, you, you do yeah. it. But <clears throat> it's like, show me in the Bible where it talks about the Vatican, where it talks about, like, the, you don't have to use the word Vatican, but show me in the Bible where it talks about we have a guy who's a leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? That, well, the leader's Christ. Yeah, he's not the Pope. It, it's, it's not the Pope. Yeah. It, and so when, you know, it's like, it's just, there was a lot of things, like my whole life I've been taught, you know, part of getting or having eternal salvation. Mm -hmm. um, if you believe in God, if you're a Christian and you believe in life after like death and uh -huh. eternal yeah. life, life from the physical death, um, part of it is you have to do it through works, good works, right? Yeah. Which is what I've been taught my whole life. Faith without works is dead, right. as they say. Now, there's some truth to that in different contexts, but you're right. Yeah. But there's when I started to, understand like the simplicity and where it's stated in the Bible so many times where it's God breathed and Jesus literally says through repentance and faith, you will be given the grace of God yeah, and be entered into the kingdom of heaven. So it doesn't talk about anything about works. Okay. Now you're, that doesn't right. mean yeah. you'll be a bad person. But what it means is, like when the ten, you know, my understanding it isn't it how ten, you feel in your heart as a, you know, yeah. see the as opposed to doing where, physical works. Yeah, I, I'm right. on track. And, and to yeah. me, you know, to me, I'll say, look, the ten commandments are singed on everybody's heart. They're burnt mm -hmm. into everybody's heart, whether oh, sure. we like it or not. Okay, mm -hmm. that's where your moral law comes from. That's where you know, even when, even if someone is a staunch atheist or a staunch crystal worshiper um, or whatever they are, okay, mm -hmm. the moral law is singed on their heart, okay, and they have to get that from somewhere. And then, you know, you'll have scientists that be like, well, we you know, totally don't believe in gods, you know, so yeah. scientists and evolutionists and, and, but where do they get like why do people not kill people just randomly for no reason it's like where does that moral law come from that's a great did, point did the universe did the big bang make that decision yeah. you know <laughs> okay well what was before the big bang if the big bang happened what was before the big bang i hadn't really thought of it in, in those right? terms that's fascinating that's so so really i'm like okay well I'm, I'm so when I'm first learning this, I'm like, it's like, like, it's like when you first get into the program, the AA, yeah, like, yeah, oh my god, like on like, fire, right? yeah. So I'm thinking to myself, this is great because you know, it's it's repentance of your sins and your wrongdoings and faith in God and believing in the word of God and following the moral law, and it's not through works that gets you to heaven, right? It's not through good deeds. Look in the what started the Reformation War, which I didn't even know about in the late 1400s and 1500s, which lasted almost 100 years, and it was Martin Luther, and it was John Calvin, and it was all these people, mm. um, because Rome was selling indulgences. So okay. you, you, the Pope was like, here, for X amount of silver or gold, you get to buy your way into heaven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, that's, not, that's kind of like a red flag <laughs> kind of set the stage for a few uh right? so how bad come, things later how on in life I, yeah. like i didn't learn about the whole that whole thing until like two and a half three years ago yeah it's, it's and, and and that makes and now there are like there are some things like you know i mean revelations which is the last book of the mm -hmm. bible is a lot of it's metaphorical. Um, a lot of it's written that way, but uh, it is really the definition of end times of how it's going to happen uh -huh. in the second coming of Christ. And um, but if if you go back and just see how all these things connect, like there's too much evidence. There's just way too much evidence for this to be made up and this to yeah. not be true. Um, and here, you know. 
uh, one of the things I find like amusing um, personally is, and I'll even use AEA as an example. Okay. Um, you'll hear people talk. And if they're giving a talk or whatever, and they'll talk about Buddha and, and they'll talk about the universe and which is, you know, considered new age, right? Yeah. Yeah. They'll definitely. New about, age. <laughs> yeah. You know, the God of their understanding is, um, you know, uh, Allah or whatever the God of their mm -hmm. understanding is, um, Krishna, whatever. And, and nobody really, you know, has a pushback. As soon as you say Jesus Christ, there's huge you, pushback, huge there pushback. Is people squirming in their seats and there's push. So, so, so why that, is it? So yeah, to sorry, me, go ahead, that in and of itself reinforces to me that, yes, that's why they're squirming. Because deep down inside, I think it's burned in their heart that they know oh, that man. that is, even though they don't want to accept it. And it's become to me so chic to be anti christian in today's yeah. society do, do you feel the same way Which i mean the like work of who the the devil the say, devil i could say the devil it's, it's the work of it's the work it of the has devil. to be and it's like you know it's like it's like you know if, if three four years ago if I, if somebody would have told me i would be this would be my understanding or my redefined and very specific <laughs> understanding i'd be like well i mean yeah, I mean, I believe what that person is saying, but man, yeah. they're like a Bible thumper, and I'm not sure. a Bible thumper. I'm about truth. I want. I'm a truth. yeah. I don't. I don't I take you as a. Truth. I don't take you as a Bible thumper at all. I, I take you as somebody who is just spitting truth, man. Right. I mean, that's. And I want. So I want to know about truth. Yeah. Period. I don't want to know about your truth, and I don't want you to know about my truth. I want to know about the truth. About the truth. Yeah. There's only the truth. There is not nothing else. There's yeah. the truth. And there's my opinion and there's your opinion, but there's only one truth. I love sure. that. It's true because your your truth is shaded. My truth is shaded one way. Right. But ultimately, and that, there is one truth. And that brings it back to dumbing it down to fundamentals for people yes. like you. Right. Well, it's like, not just people like you, because I, I when you gave that analogy of, you know, just getting back to, OK, run block, footwork, yep, yep. boom, Locking or pass blocks that, you yep. know. So in yep. baseball, uh, we have a phrase that's, you know, if, if a pitcher can't find the dish, you know, he's all over the place. He's yep. walking guys. And uh, so the catcher will come out and he'll say, listen, don't think, just throw. Right. Don't think, just throw. And it doesn't mean that it's not a thinking man's game. People refer to baseball as a thinking man's game. But it means that you're overthinking things. Yep. You're overthinking things on every single level. And it's almost like these great baseball movies when you see a dad having a catch with a son, you know. And it's just like, hit the mitt, son. Hit the mitt. Right. And that's what big league pitchers have to go back to that fundamental of thinking, yeah. okay, clear the mechanism. Yeah. What did I do as a kid? Don't think, just throw. Right. That makes and that sense. and everything yeah. comes and then we're able to kind of recalibrate, get our foundation again. Yeah. And then we can start, you know, with with the with the thinking about how to throw sliders and where to put, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. And yeah. it's kind of like yeah, I yeah, imagine yeah. with football being an old yeah. lineman too. Exactly. It's the same analogy, different different uh, like yeah. actions. Mm -hmm. Same analogy. And I was lucky enough to have a friend who I hadn't talked to in probably five years and I met her for coffee and she had had a lot of the same experience that I am, had had now, with uh -huh. the gospel, uh, but she had already had it five years prior. So, but the last time I knew her or had seen her was actually, and she had worked for, I want to say the cubbies okay. um, as a physical therapist. Okay. Um, and and she was teaching yoga here in Scottsdale, okay. hot yoga. And this so like the last time I saw her was like 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. And you know, we'll stay in touch like once a year via social media. Hi, yeah. how are you? Yeah. And we met for coffee. Um, and I because I she had came up on one of my social medias and I said, Hey, how you know, you still out in Chicago? And she said she's no back, she's back here. So we met for coffee. I had like no intention of talking about god or anything we just wanted to catch up yeah right? 
Well, that's so, where the conversation yeah, went. And that's where yeah. the conversation kind of went by itself. And so she asked, and, and now this woman has grace. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's what we're all she, after though. I mean, I, right. me personally, I'm after grace. Is, right. you know, she, it, it's, she asked me gracefully and non-threateningly and not any kind of accusation. <laughs> She asked me, because she asked me about what my belief in God was, and I uh -huh. told her I was born and raised Catholic, and I believe in the Trinity, and she's, and then, so a lot of the thinking is, or a lot of the closed book arguments are the same. Yes. But with Rome, and I'm I'm not picking on Rome, but Rome, there's too many. Too I was many raised things. Episcopalian, so that's, oh, we call that Catholic light. Right. You know, so, so it's very similar. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, I would say I'm pro like uh, a reformed Christian, which would lean towards more Protestant or, yeah, you yeah. know, Protestant protest, right? That's what I sure that's, that's where the, Protestant came from. Preface, yeah. Anglicanism came from. That's where Anglican came well, Angli from. Well, Anglicanism, I think similar to Episcopalian, I believe. Church of England, it's correct? England, England. Yeah. Yeah. But that came from the Reformation War from the king. Yeah. So because they were like, we're not listening to Rome anymore. Yeah, because you know you're selling indulgences. That's well, you're selling I indulgences. I was just going to say, like you said earlier, you're you selling know, your way into heaven. It's like come talking on. Talking about like there's stuff written in the gospel that is like no, there's no like misinterpretation here from Greek or Hebrew to English. Like it mm -hmm. is crystal clear. Yeah. Yet it's being promoted in this country. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself. This country, I mean, we're we're in a interesting time, um, say the least. <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it concerns me. It yeah. concerns me not for me personally. It concerns me for the country. Yes, because uh, I love this country. Yes, and I love what this country has offered me. And as and, I do, I mean, yeah. I, I I'm so grateful for to America for a thousand second chances. You know, yep. I, I don't think I would have been yep. afforded the chances that I've had in other countries. And, and, and I, I'm, myself, I'm a huge patriot, Tony. Like I love. And I, that's I, why I keep I'm, un, I'm an unapologetic <laughs> patriot too. Like I don't apologize for loving America. I just don't, and I won't. Well, and, and the thing is, it's um, you know, it, it's the. It, the moral biblical inspiration of what this country is about. I mean, the constitution was written from really taken from the moral laws of the Bible. Yeah. If you really look at when I started reading stuff about like the law in the old Testament, how the law works. Right. And I'm sitting here going, this is our court system. Yeah. Like this is exact. Like this is very similar. Yeah. To, except now we have no cash bail bonds, or we have no bonds <laughs> after you assault somebody, and you just go back it's out insane. and do it. It's insane. Right. It's so, insane. But um, and it's like I never knew that. Like I, I never even thought about that, and it, it was just very interesting to find a lot of the, these things out. And you know, there's so much if you study. And again, I know just the tip of the iceberg and that's why it, you know continue to study and it'll take uh -huh. me until the day i die and i still won't know what what i everything i need to know but i it was crucial for me to know the closed book arguments the non-negotiables the what do you really believe in and and what that lady that i met with that i had coffee with she asked me well how do you get to heaven she goes, well, you believe in salvation? And I said, well, yeah, of course. I'm, I'm Roman Catholic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's, uh, she's like, okay, good. She's like, uh, so do you know how, how, like, what do you have to do to get to heaven? Because it's very specific in the Bible. Mm. And I'm like, and I was kind of like, um. Yeah, like, what's the, <laughs> what's the right answer for right. this, this is my friend like, here? Yeah. Well, you got to be a good person. And she's just listening to me. She's and you're I, just spit. Yeah, I, she's probably she like thinking. It's very specific, Tony. Right. In the, <laughs> I think she was thinking this poor soul is lost. Yeah. But you know what? She did it with all the love in the world. Oh, I was going to say. I that's what that was my question. Was I bet she did it just with dignity and grace she, and treated was, didn't make you feel less than and not at you know, all, not yeah. at all. And she said, and she said, this is not what I say. This is what was God breathed into the Bible. This is what God says, that if you repent of your sins and if you have faith in this, in the one and only God, 
and that the only way to the Father is through Jesus, then you will be granted the grace of God, yeah. and that's how you get to heaven. Yeah. So I, so my first, of course, my first thing is, so I don't have to be a good guy. So I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, she's that's like, such an ironic way of thinking, like, though. Like, you know what I mean? The, like, the just the to, manipulation. She wanted, to, she wanted to punch me. She ah, to punch so I don't me get it. Like, well, if you're repented, yeah, and, and if you <laughs> believe, you're naturally that miracle will happen, and you yeah. will you will act that way, right? You will act according to your belief system and your doctrine. And so it was, and she introduced me to some pastors that are phenomenal. And um, you're in Scottsdale right now, I'm right? in Scottsdale. The, the, I was supposed to be down there the 4th of April uh, to do an event. I think Marshall Falk was going to be down there, a couple other guys, and I just yeah. couldn't get away. But I plan yeah. on being down there in, well, with the, in the summer. Cactus League. Well, they had the Cactus League. Yeah, they, they got did. spring training going yeah. on too. Yeah. But um but you know, she did it in a very loving way and, and she said, Well, she's like, that's what Catholicism does teach. But that's not what it says in the Bible. It actually says the opposite in the Bible. It says you will not have eternal salvation because of your works. I didn't know this. This is super fascinating for me because so, I. And you know. So think about it. I'm reading this, going, "Wait a second. This is not what I was. Not taught. what I was taught. Not right. what I was. My beliefs well, are. My do well, yeah. it, Right. And it's kind of like, well, why do you think you weren't taught it? Because Ooh, they want control yeah. over you. That's a and whole. Oh boy, that, you just that's you. Pandora's box being open right there. And you're right. right, though, man. So it it really made me. And again, I. I mean, I have friends that are all different. Yeah, as I do too. I know where you're going with this. And I'm yeah. still friends with them. Uh, if they have a different belief system, you know, that's what they have to answer to. Yeah, they don't have um, to answer to Tony Mandridge, Brianna. No, they don't have to no, Bo Payne. And it's, not, and it's yeah. not my word. It's written here. And, and and also another thing is is that it doesn't have, this is huge. It doesn't have to end friendships and it doesn't have to. No put yeah, chasms or, you know, bad stuff in between people and make people feel uncomfortable because right. responsible, yeah. reasonable adults can talk about things like this. Exactly. You know? And I think that, um, you know, like that we talked a little bit about how much division there is in the country over all these things of everything from race to certain laws, to certain liberties, to certain Supreme court justices to, you know, like if people understood i'm i'm not like uh i was never a big trump guy mm -hmm. and even when he was president i was a trump policy guy sure i, I was not like a, i love this man like yeah i yeah. do like i i personally feel now i might be getting spoofed but i personally feel from people that i know that have met him and know him and from what i see on tv he really does love this country. Now, this country has also been very good to him. <laughs> yeah, it's been And he loves this country. Yeah. Now, I hate his narcissism. Yeah, it's, it's a put off. It, it's, it's a, a huge it's a put turn off. off. And especially for, I don't want to say especially for, but for the three of us that have been through a lot of stuff. Yep. And we know that our worst downfalls were when we were the most narcissistic. <laughs> I, right? know, and, I know, I know. We had the answers or, or, or all the pride and all yeah. that. Well, the pride right there yeah. is just, God. And it's, so it's like, I truly believe, but if you can't have a discussion and, and of, of even politics anymore, and it's like, people don't, like, the current guy doesn't want to even debate. Yeah. And it's, it's like, wait a second, this has been going on for hundreds, over hundreds of years. That's a staple debate. in American politics is the, yeah. the two presumptive nominees right. debate. And, and, I mean, and then the, the then the VPs debate and we right and know. let the people decide. Yes, you can't. And then what most people don't look up and and I didn't look up until four or five months ago. I wanted to know what he was being charged for, like like specifically in yeah. New York. Yeah. Okay. In Atlanta, it's for they're saying it's because of the insurrection or the so called insurrection. But wait a second. He, he hasn't, hasn't been charged. Been charged with he hasn't been charged with that though, yeah. and they're trying to kick so, him off the ballot box because of so, that charge that hasn't right. that doesn't exist. Right. So that's one you know? thing. In New York, 
when I researched from both sides, multiple places that see it extremely both ways differently, mm -hmm. the stuff he's being charged like for is like almost an analogy of of saying we got a speeding ticket or we didn't put you know two dollars in the parking meter and we parked for three hours and didn't pay that ticket now we're going to take you to court for it so you can't run or just be more interference sure for you running to be president it's like so stupid i it's, think it's all election interference personally i think it is too in, in a um, strange roundabout way but it, it's it's almost in any way that we can interfere we want yeah. to. and and so i so again to me that is like the red flag warning of evil. There's evil. This is done maliciously. This is done on purpose. They hate him. I don't care how much you hate his personality. Look at his policies. Yeah. I can look at the guy's policies who's in office now. And, and I, like, I don't have a hatred towards this guy who's in office now. Um, disagree. I this... just disagree with a lot yeah. of his policies. But there are people that literally hate the other guy and they will do anything they can. And to me, that's where you where, where that drives me back yeah. to the fundamental book. The visceral reactions that yeah. he that 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 syndrome the guy gets from other that's, people is just I don't get it. It's yeah. just like it's, it's crazy. Just, it's, it's crazy. It's it's and here's the know, here's the other crazy not stable. Thing. Here's here's a a crazy thing that is and, and and i'm not the type of guy anymore to be like told you so or yeah yeah well you don't get pleasure you. out of i or don't either crazy I, I thing you. yeah not everything but i would say most of the stuff he said that would happen has happened yeah and also and and they were all called conspiracy theories they were all called you're crazy yeah. you're uh you're an, you're a, you're a, you're in love with an idol of Trump and this it's like no to idolize Trump it goes against the moral law of God. Well, there's no idol above right there's no God. Idol. there's no other yeah. idol so it or was no amazing, other idol. Yeah, it was amazing to me that most of the stuff going back and looking at some of the stuff that he predicted would happen he was on point so it's like he could see how corrupt things were mm -hmm. behind the scenes. But when you're being, you know, sabotaged from your internal sources, yeah, you know, I mean, that's a tough deal. The, and the other thing I'll say is there was, you know, I mean, there were people in my family um, that had a very, very hard time with him being president when he got elected because... Mm -hmm. They were like, we are guaranteed a nuclear war. And isn't and, that ironic that he's the first president in 40 something years not to get the we United States that, engaged in a com? Yeah. In a, and we were yeah. in the app, we were already in Afghanistan. So, yes, he was in the war, but he, there was no new war started. He actually diffused a lot of if ISIS. ISIS diffused. eliminated. Okay? Eliminated. Totally eliminated. They're back now. So yes, they are. This is where we go to policies. Let's take away the personalities. Let's go to policies. Plus, also, I want to say that uh, there's this whole policy on on you know, hey, this country over here is good, and this country is not good, and it's yeah. like, well, our whole life, Russia has not been good, right? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, war yeah. and all that stuff. Sure. And, you know what? I know a lot of Russian people that are salt of the earth. Absolutely. And, Me too. And and I know, actually, I could say that about a lot of people from just a, almost any culture that yeah. I know. And there's jerks. In there's jerks in any race, mostly. culture, creed. You know, right. I met a lot of good folks from different places in, in the rooms, to be honest with you. Right. you know? and, exactly. So, and, and, and I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot of from people where like we talked about earlier where i was like i really don't have much in common with this person but we're in the same room so we have that in common and then from getting to know that person and speaking to them to see how they grew up and to see their point of view yeah was very interesting and insightful because i didn't have that point of view because i didn't have that experience were so were you born in canada or yeah okay i thought so yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. so uh 
it, it, it's just for me as bad as the 2020 was with the pandemic the protesting mm-hmm. the election stuff um all the stuff it was it was actually a great catalyst for me yeah and and i'm not saying it was it, it, there was a pain involved but it was what it was the catalyst that drove me back to the fundamentals yeah the well so uh, it was a good thing it was it was as much you know yeah there was bad stuff that happened um but for me for me there was yeah i mean there was a lot of relationships lost yeah um yeah that's lot, that's the unfortunate thing is that yeah. like the dinner table conversations really blasted yeah. families yeah. apart you know friendships yeah. yeah i had i've had i'm not real vocal about this stuff i obviously have really deep-rooted strong opinions on things um but I've just the friendships and the relationships yeah. that were destroyed over yeah. people not being willing to just listen to the other side. Yeah. Uh, it's sad to me. It know? is. And I think the key, I think one of the keys for me is, and I've, and I've tried to maintain this and I feel that I do. And I do, I think I maintain it staunchly is, is I, my arms are open. No, I, yeah. And, yeah. and I'm I not going to, if you come back, I'm not going to sit there and say, I told you so. Or because look, I was wrong in a lot of things for a decade. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. And and I'm still wrong today. Well, some- I don't. I don't think you get satisfied. You get to a point in life, at least I do, where I don't even take satisfaction in being a right. gotcha guy or I told right. you so and this and that. Right. It's like, yeah. how can I help you yeah. instead of I told yeah. you so? I mean, it's, yeah. it's it goes against everything that us in recovery really believe in. Yes, you know? and yeah, and we don't shoot and, our wounded. You know? No, and then again get into the recovery thing it gave me perspective on 12 step yes 12 step was a is a great is a great tool but 12 step is not the bible no no almost no. everything from 12 step is taken you know from oxford movement and then yeah it's from oxford all that before taken, but it's all taken from the original book mm-hmm. or a set of books the bible right yeah so and look and and, and no way am i you know, saying that 12 step is not good, but when you do have the thing that says God, as you understand him, now you are determining who God yeah. is. Yeah. And that's a big no, no in biblical terms. In biblical oh. terms. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, and I mean, you've been in, around the rooms for a long time. I think that that was, what's the word I'm looking for? Just initiated or put through just to bring, Incl- inclusivity to people yeah, who may right. you know but and, and look what and look what it's done for us today yeah yeah recently as far as the dei look what it's done for us oh, with gosh. inclusivity yeah. now I, like i said again i'm not uh i still go to 12 step for mainly for two reasons connection um, do you well number one is they were there for me when i came it's a great point okay yeah that's the, that's a big reason. And number two is if somebody wants to know more about God or what, if they're struggling with a God of their understanding, I can be as graceful as that woman was with me Yes, and just share with them. This is not what I say. This is what the Bible says. So this is not Tony's law. This is God's law. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And this might help you in determining your understanding of god and um and so having that opportunity well i mean that's paying it forward paying your you know what does it say a primary purpose is to stay sober and help other struggling alcoholics achieve sobriety and that's in a not in a way that is a way of helping somebody come to grips with their addiction alcoholism and then how to move forward with with a rock solid idea of who not an idea but understanding of who god is yeah Exactly. And, you know, I never looked at, I mean, it, it literally says in the Bible also, you know, uh, about being a drunkard and being drunk yeah. is not the way, is is, a, is literally a sin. Yeah. Okay. It's not in the Ten Commandments, but it's... it's no, the drunkard up. part, yeah. Yeah, the drunkard part is like, that's being, a, that's being sinful and that's not how, what God created you to be. Every and, time I was drunk off my butt, I was extremely... I was pathetic and it was pitiful and it was sinful and it was everything that is not 
graceful and dignified right. and who right. I want to be as a right. man. And, and, you know, it's hard, even if, even if you simplify it to the 10 commandments, which is like really simplifying it. Sure. Okay? It's hard to live by those 10 commandments. Yeah. It's I mean, there's a lot of temptation hard. in the world. Was... Like it is, I mean, it, tell, it, 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 you know, you talk, like if you really want to dummy it down, anybody listening, go pull up the Ten Commandments. Um, yeah, and and it, you know, you can pull up a, a you know the old version or you know with the vows and the these and all that, but or how it was translated. But even if you want to translate it into more modern language, they're pretty specific. I'd it's say pretty specific. Okay? Yeah. So thou shall not murder. Well, or thou shall not kill. I mean, there's a huge difference between killing and murdering. Okay. Murder is with malice. Murder sure. is with intent. Uh -huh. You know, you kill somebody and you, that you didn't mean to kill. That's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Even though there's a life loss, it's still a whole different ball game. Completely. You, were hard. Yeah. you did not mean, yeah. like you weren't going out saying, hey, I'm going to go kill this guy with, you know. With intent and malice. And, yeah, yeah, with intent. There's a whole different thing. It, it just amazes me. It, you know, to be and to be funny, it's like it amazes me how right God is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, of course, man. When I look at my own life, I'm like, everything he said would happen if I did this would happen. And, and so to spin that into like a recovery thing for me is like when I stop thinking that I knew everything and I stop being closed off to right. like people like 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 your view or Brianna's view or anyone who yeah, I mean, 29 years sober. I'm going to listen to you, man, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah, and yeah. when I stopped thinking that I had all the, I was cool and I had all the, you know, with the answers and, yeah. but yet I was getting drunk or high every day and right. couldn't stop. Right. When I, when I gave right. that BS up, I started to get better, man. I just, yeah. just, you it's know. hard to make good decisions with, with, you know, with a foggy brain and, and oh, it's hard. blurry eyes and it's, it's just hard. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, whether it's financial decisions, yeah. marital decisions, doesn't matter what kind of decision it, it's, you're not crystal clear. And, and then, you know, a lot of the decisions, I mean, every morning, but I've been doing this for almost my whole sobriety is every morning starts off on my knees. Yeah. You know, asking God for help to, and thanking yep. God for keeping Thank, and thanking God. Yeah. That's and, 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 and being like, you know, let's tackle the day. And, and see what kind of opportunity we have to carry the message. And the key word, well, many key words, but, but the word today, you know, yeah. when, and, and we talk about simpling it up, dumbing it down, you know, whatever we want to call it. Um, when I live for today, like I, I do the same thing, Tony, thank you, God, for my sobriety. Thank you for my freedom. Thank you. Right. Thank you for that. I'm not, you know, I'm not locked up in an eight by eight. Right. Right. Thanks for my health. Right. Uh, please help me be a good example to any struggling alcoholic or anybody as I come across. Please take care of my children and let's have a great day and let's go. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's not that difficult. And I feel great when I do those things, yeah. you know, and, and, and when I don't do those things, I feel like a part of me through that day is missing. Exactly. You know, does that make sense? It absolutely. Makes yeah. Sense. And it's just, it's, it's yeah. black and white, you know, yeah. and it's been like my life. It, this isn't about me, the show, but I want to say this, like, over the career of my or course of my life, you know, I've had a lot of success too, but all my success has been when I have been grounded in God and grounded in my sobriety and working a program, gratitude, service, solution, service being just as big as any of it. And yeah. when I've been in prison or when I have fallen flat on my face or relapse or whatever, um, I wasn't doing any of those things. Yeah. So it's really black and white. If I want success, I need to be grounded first and foremost, God over everything else and everybody else in my life. And then working a program of sobriety, being grateful, living in solution, which is how I've been taught to live, you know, happily in sobriety, not right. just miserable, abstinent. Right, right. And then also being of service to, to other people yeah. and not like you, you, you put it. I want to praise you, man. Like you've really put it eloquently on this show. Like, not one time have I felt that you are preaching at somebody or, or talk, you know, you, you've, you've explained your, I don't want to say opinion because it's fact, but you know, you've well, explained really how beliefs. you feel. Yeah. Your beliefs. Yeah. And, and it's been, and if more people would just take time to explain that to people, this is what works for me. This is what I believe. This is what I've learned from biblical terms or, you know, what have you, instead of you need to do that, this, that, this, that, and this, right. I think that we'd have a lot higher success rate. 
I agree. Um, when people explain things like you said, or the gal who you talked to explain yeah. to you with grace and dignity, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and, and it's, you know, and, it, and it's, it's really everybody. It's, it's not, it's how we treat each other as human yeah. beings, you know? And, and I think that's gone by the wayside. It's just, yeah. I don't know. And, and there's, but... it's, yeah. And there's, it's just very interesting. Like you start to see the world differently. You, yeah. Like the whole world. Yeah, uh, it's 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 pretty obvious here how um, there's a narrative here. I mean, you oh, have athletes, yeah. you have athletes winning huge like championships or something, and you know they'll and they're Christian and they'll say something like, you know, first the thing I want to say is I want to you know thank Jesus. Well, Christ. they cut the kid C J. Stroud off the interview, right? Remember and, they, the, and they'll edit the rookie the from Houston, the Texans, yeah. the good yeah. QB, and yeah. they, they said, no, nah, you you're not saying. I'm giving praise right. to, you know, right. on air. We ain't having that. Right. And it's like, and, the, and, or they'll edit it out or, or that's what they did. Yeah. 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 And it's like, so right there is like, okay, he didn't say anything like that was like, he didn't swear. He yeah. Didn't, he, he didn't like nothing offensive, of nothing like, sexist or piggish right. or nothing. He, all he did was for five seconds, talk about the number most important thing in his life. That's, got yeah. him the opportunity to have this success it's almost they, like that's the greatest sin now in america is to prep well, profess your belief in god it just right. it's like like why are why is the narrative that well yeah, you've got to question things like that puppets, why and you have yeah. puppets sitting there holding the microphone and then you have people don't want to lose their jobs well that's a huge and, thing too they're afraid the of retribution thing, right and then it's like okay and I understand that. I I understand that. It's like yeah. you don't want to say certain things that'll offend how this company will look at things or how this uh -huh. organization will look at things. But but you're willing to betray God, yeah. Which is what all your stuff comes from. All your your creation, the salvation, yeah. everything that I believe in. You know that's why I i'm i'm glad that it's becoming more obvious that this stuff is getting edited out because so yeah people that aren't paying attention can start to see why are they editing that out i think that there was a lot of blowback on they did it to brock purdy as well uh they oh, did it to did brock purdy they edited his stuff and they edited out cj stroud the, the qb yeah. the young qb from yeah. out ohio state yeah uh and i think that there were a lot of people upset with it you know yeah it's like you're well, going to let these people. Told, what does that tell you about our nation? Well, it just right? we've so changed like, a lot, <laughs> right? We really, we really lost our yeah our uh, moral compass. I, I, I was going to say our north star, but you know, yeah. same thing. Moral and compass, it's, exactly, uh, exactly. If, if that's missing, if you're getting so much pushback because of that, I think it's. I think it. it yeah. It, it it tells you something. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. Listen, so let's transition real quick. We've got about 10 minutes or so. Um, and thank you. That, that Man, I'm, I just am fascinated by Again, that. And just my opinions from what I've read that I believe is the truth. Oh, you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to put any disclaimers on anything, anything, man. We we're, I'm super happy. I just, like I said, the goal of this show is always, you know, just great conversations with interesting people. And like, you know, there's people have different opinions on things yeah. and, yeah. but we, but what I try to do is I let people tell them, yeah, talk about it. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I'm not going to shout, even if somebody came on and was saying, I don't want to say, you know, just, I just like to let people speak what they believe or what they know right. and then let the chips fall where they may. And hopefully we've presented a good argument for one side or the other, and then yeah. you're able to take it and run yeah. with it and pass it on to somebody else. But so no, 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 you don't put any disclaimers, man, man. You're, this is like hundred percent authentic, man. When, when we get on this show, hundred percent, but I do want to talk a little bit about, um, the transition from Michigan state into green Bay. Uh, you and I, I don't know if you remember telling me this, but how you struggle a little bit with Reggie white in practice, oh, a little bit, things like that. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Brianna, Reggie White is arguably, in my opinion, he, well, he's the top two defensive guys of all time. Yeah. Lawrence Taylor and Reggie yeah. White, probably. You know? yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. when Tony got to the NFL, Tony plays on the offensive line where he blocks for the quarterback or the run, running backs. And then mm -hmm. so he's got to stop the defensive guys from 
getting to the quarterback to sack him or tackle the ball carrier. And Tony had to go one-on-one -on -one against uh, arguably the greatest defensive football player that ever lived. Um, so that had to be a little bit of a rude awakening uh, as a, it was, it was an awakening. All right. It was, um, and, yeah. and, you know, Reggie. So I played against, so Reggie didn't come to green Bay till I was already out of green Bay, but I played against Reggie twice when I was in green Bay. Okay. Green Bay. Okay. Gotcha. And then I also played against them once, uh, when, when he, he was, was in Philly green Bay and I was an in Indy. Okay. Got, okay. And even he was on the latter part of his career and they mm -hmm. won the Super Bowl that year in, I want to say it was 90. Uh, the pack was 96. They beat yeah. the, my team, the Pats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, they won the Super Bowl. He was on going towards, I would say the latter part, starting the latter part. Of yeah. The and, and he had been in the USFL too yeah. before. So, and, and yeah. I'll, and I would, so I played against him. So now I played against him six, seven years prior to that when he was in his prime uh -huh. and then played against. And I can tell you, even in the latter part of his career, he was in the top three in the NFL. God, it's amazing. Ends. The guy was yeah. just incredible. Um, the he, minister of defense. Yeah. The minute he was a minister, right? Yeah. He was ordained. a very yeah. devout uh, Christian. And um, there's a funny story. Uh, I was doing a block on him. We played him in Philly on a Sunday night ESPN game late in the season, we were, uh -huh. we were like, I was with green Bay. We were like, uh, like two and 12 and they were okay. 14 and two. Like Had Jerome people. Brown and Randall yeah. Cunningham and oh, all. They yeah. were just crushing Jerome people. Brown. Jeez. And, and Reggie just, just annihilated me. And Philly's a tough place to play. Oh yeah. 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 You know, and, yeah. Well, and the old, the old vet too. The old vet, yeah. Yeah. So I remember walking off the field thinking to myself, it'll be too soon if I never see that guy again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you hear stories, but I just, yeah. I've seen him in, and uh, I've never seen him live, but I've seen him, you know, plenty of games, literally just that, that club, club move, move, you know, yeah, that, club, yeah. just the club. The, thing, the crazy thing is in April, the schedule comes out for the next year. Uh -huh. This is three, four months after playing them in December. And we open up with Philly at home. Okay. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me? You mean like, in Indy or Indy, Green? We're, uh, uh, Philly's coming to Green Bay. Coming to Green Bay. Gotcha. Season okay. opener for the next season. Oh, okay. So you're like, oh, well, great. Like, I got oh, Reggie White. Is, <laughs> were you playing like, guard or tackle? Play. Were you on the left side, though? Uh, no, I was on the right side. Right you're on the right. Okay. So I was playing literally against them all game. Yeah. Okay. So gotcha. I did play. I mean, I played a lot better, but he still dominated me. And there was one time... I had an easy, like, a, for me, an easy block, just a cutoff block. And yeah. if you're big and strong, it really doesn't matter how much, how big and strong the other guy is. You can do a good job because you already have the advantage of you know where you're going. Yeah, exactly. So it, that millisecond of him having to figure out where to go is enough for me to block him. Sure. For the kind of block. So I was doing well, and... You know, I can't tell the plays going the other side, so I can't yeah. tell. And the running back cuts back and gets and then ends up getting tackled by Reggie. But I did my block, but it's still, it's not good because he made the tackle and it was like, <laughs> yeah. like a one yard loss, right? Yeah, in the backfield. So I get up off the ground and I'm like, and I say, you know, G, you know, GD, uh -huh. GD, and and I'll tell you what. Oh, Reggie got on you about it, didn't oh, he? Oh, did he get on me about it? And, <laughs> ah, this is so uh, cool. So think about it. I'm like 6'6", 320. Yeah, you were massive he's, back then. Yeah, he's 6'6", six, six, probably 290 three, maybe. 10. 310, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. A, he played big. He was huge. He literally grabbed me like with his hands. Don't you say that, my, son. On my shoulders. With that he, graspy he, voice. And, said, and i never forget it. He said, son, he said, God had nothing to do with it. <laughs> I, I was like. I was oh, my like, gosh. I was like. <laughs> Yes, sir, Mr. White. Yes, sir, Mr. White. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I can't yeah. the razzing I got from the rest of the old. I bet, man. I bet. Yeah. Uh, Brianna, Reggie White, we're talking about, um, like like Tony said, staunch, you know, Christian. He's an ordained pastor and he's an ordained minister, all, the whole nine. Yeah. yeah. So I can see him say, you know, in that yeah. rap, that raspy voice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was, <laughs> he was like really like the total package of human. Like in my opinion, of human being an athlete, right? Yeah, he was yeah. like a man of great. He was a great athlete. Period. Great sure. football player. Period. Uh, probably the best at that position ever. Yeah, um, I'd say so. And 
as far as character of a man, just uh-huh. unbelievable. Like just yeah. like is it's if it's like now, like if I look at stuff, who would I want to model myself after? Well, that mm-hmm. name would come up. Reggie yep. White would be yep. on a short list, I imagine. Yeah. I mean, from what I all I know, and I don't know him, or I never knew him before. Yeah. He, you know, but I, what I understood, he was a he was a good husband. He was yeah, a good father. A he was night. a good friend. A good yeah. a good obviously teammate. You know, yeah. Told you that God had nothing to do. Yeah, <laughs> blowing was, up the backfield. Funny, sitting here, funny, 30, you know, 25, 30 years later, sitting there talking about that, right? And how <sighs> the the whole thing's changed, and you know, and I'm sure that was a spoke in the wheel of change of him saying that to me. Yeah, you know, but I, was I still, bet it was even at that time. I was yeah. still a believer. It's just that I would use that phrase more often. Yeah. Like, I didn't use it all the time. I didn't even three years ago, I would say it here and there, but I didn't, I did not sit down and make a conscious decision not to say that phrase. It just melted away. It disappeared. Isn't it funny how we can look back at things? Like I think it's, it's James 13, seven or John 13, seven. I'm not sure, but, and I'm paraphrasing, but it says you may not know what I'm doing now, but keep right. your faith and and, right. and in, in due time things will become right. clear and that's a yeah. paraphrase but i think yeah. you know what i'm saying i think it's yeah, james yeah. james yeah. 13 7 anyways it, for me it's funny to be able to look back on things yeah and now you know i'm, I'm very open to signs and in the universe and <clears throat> and god yeah. and things like that and i think that that little incident son god had nothing to do with it <laughs> may have been a, one of many spokes along the way that had have propelled you to where you are today you know know? now you know studying and learning and wanting to learn more yeah it probably makes sense yeah and it does make sense but then i want to like like i think to myself boy a perfect comeback would have been like so you don't believe in predestination right (laughs) and then you know because he would have looked at me like what are you talking about how do you know this right yeah but i just sit now i can sit back and look at it and i can giggle to myself that's you know, so cool. I can't you know, imagine if you said that to him, what, what his response would be. Yeah. He probably would have just beat you down. He, right? he probably would have beat me worse. <laughs> he uh, probably, yeah. Yeah. And he, you know, when he died, he, he was obviously retired. Yeah. And yeah. Obviously very young in his early forties, I think. And, yeah. um, he was big time studying the Bible and yeah. he was studying different religions. Okay. To give him a better grasp of. Sure. The, um like he was like like he was committed he was committed to what he, he always seemed like he just did not care what people thought not in a bad way but just like no, i'm yeah. i am focused i'm doing this is the way i believe this is yeah. what i'm going to teach this is the man yeah. i'm going to be and then to me it seemed like he embodied all those things yeah. he didn't just talk about it but yeah and everybody that i knew that um played with him on as a teammate yeah. they just said that he just elevated everybody like that's even awesome. without, yeah. and he may not even say a word to you about something but, it, yeah. but you just feel elevated and it's like I, I think when they did a documentary on him here recently yeah you know, i haven't seen that i'm gonna watch it it's but good it's really good, is it good? yeah i think yeah. i think brett Favre said something that was very funny he said um he said reggie would never tell a dirty joke in the mm. locker room but at sometimes he would laugh at him. He would laugh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of absolves him from well, and it's kind being of like, the you know instigator. What? But yeah, he is human. Right? Of course, we're all fallible, man. We're, we're all fallible. fallible. So absolutely. But I thought that was a great description. That is of, so. Yeah, it's almost like hedging your bets. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you uh, know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> And, that's so uh, cool yeah. this i got a couple hey i want to ask you a few more questions like a little this won't be like a little rapid fire thing but i just um i want to ask you just a few questions before we wrap it up a little bit about recovery and then a little bit of, about your own i know i know from just knowing you and knowing you know you're a big music guy and stuff like yeah. that so um 29 years sober today uh saturday correct correct tony manders just incredible um so can you tell us two things the the darkest point in your life as far as addiction and then um, what sobriety has given you? Um, Do you have an absolute rock bottom or was it a serious, a series of them or I, I like, would, you I, got sober 29 years ago. Well, so yeah, I guess, and yeah. you know, in the, I know in the last 
three years of my um, drinking and drugging, I kept saying it couldn't get worse, and it kept getting worse. It kept. It does always it kept doesn't getting it? worse. Yes. Um, I will say this. Uh, I don't think my. I don't think the darkest moment has happened yet. Okay. Um, that's just my personal feeling. Um, it's, but you're no, prepared no, for it. In, obviously, there's been yeah. I can say that there's been the darkest. There's some been some really dark moments when I was in my addiction, but I don't think the darkest moment has happened yet. Okay. Um, and, and then just look, overall, what sobriety is like? And, you know, you. I mean, just it's done been, for you in your life. Look, it, it gave me an opportunity. I mean, look, the the first. I mean, I thought it was impossible to get sober when I was at the end. Yeah, like so even the last two years of my drinking and drinking, I was like, no, it is impossible. I've tried everything yeah. and then I have the willpower of a bull, just like most of us do. And, mm -hmm. and I tried and tried and tried and could not do it. And then, and then one day somebody ironically said to me, um, would you ever think about asking about asking God? Yeah. And I said, well, no, I haven't, but I believe in God. And they're mm -hmm. like, well, did you ask him? And I said, no, no, so I haven't. Yeah, it was a, it was, it was a combination of talking to that friend okay, and then asking, and then it was given as a you gift. Ask, ask and you yeah, shall like, receive. Right. And then it still took me 25 years to really get my nose into the gospel. Even after having that proof of, yeah, of, look, if you ask, you know, God will provide and, and, you know, you got to also do the work, right? And mm -hmm. and but sobriety, in, in in sobriety talk, I will say that it gave me it gave me the opportunity for anything to happen. See, right there, and and that's why I wanted. I was hoping you'd say that because I have a lot of listeners who I don't want to say destitute, but. Mm -hmm. uh, like you just said, I, it's impossible to get sober at the end. Yeah. You know, all, all you can think about, all I could think about with blinders was just, I either wanted to die yeah. or I was just going to go on to the bitter end because I could not imagine even detoxing, let alone being right. sober, Right. you know, and, and the, the horrors that, that come with that. Yeah. Stuff. And anybody but, that's, you know, listening to this and that is feeling destitute, you are guaranteed to stay destitute. If you continue the way you're hundred percent, hundred percent guarantee. It does not get better. It gets worse, and it and it's patient, and it is um, patient and it's and ruthless. It's, yeah, patient it's, and it's ruthless and insidious. And it, you know, it's um just give it a you know it's like give it a chance. Yeah, and you know, and twelve step is a uh, definitely a popular way to get sober. It's a it's a it's a pretty I think good if you get into around the right people. It's pretty yeah. Pretty darn good, but there's other ways to get sober. Uh huh. Absolutely. Um, there's they don't have the cornerstone, and they even admit that they don't have the cornerstone on sobriety. Yeah, I think and, sobriety and recovery is not linear. I mean, I don't no, think it's just I, I one there's, one there's way. Multiple ways to yeah. get sober. Like I tried even back then. I tried going to church to get sober, and it didn't work for me. Yeah. Um, and that was you know the experience. I you know I wasn't. I was probably already coming up with like resisting, right? Like, yeah, well, yeah. But it 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 took what it took. The path happened the way it happened, and you know it, it all brought me to this moment right now. And yes, as as horrendous as the recent events have been in 2020, when I can take a step back, I can be like, wow, look at the good things that came out of it that let me see things I never believed. Now yeah. I be now I can see that this kind of evil really does exist of course it exists and, and i always say just, you know it's not just yeah. fighting and 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 battles and wars of it's a spiritual warfare. The flesh it's it's if it's this a spiritual spirit, warfare it's yeah. a spiritual warfare and it's becoming more and more obvious every day if people just stop for a second and remove some distraction even people that aren't like people that don't have a drinking yeah. problem if you can stop and just start to watch just observe and yeah. It, it might give you some like like Louisville Slugger answers. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Being knocked upside the head real quick. No right? kidding, man. No, yeah. I agree wholeheartedly. Well, that's cool, man. And I think that the huge message is that 
100% unequivocally, it you are guaranteed to live in misery worse and worse and worse if yeah. we keep using, you know, yeah. it's deaths, hospitals, institutions, everything yeah. like they talk yeah. about it. In my own life, that's been 100% true. Yeah. Uh, also, on the flip side, it's gotten a lot better. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And the way that I feel about myself inside, I don't, you know, Tony, I used to be a guy that had to tell you. Right. told you so right 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 you know, me too I couldn't wait i couldn't wait to prove that i was the guy right know? right and looking back on it I, I was so arrogant because i was so insecure about myself and right i felt the need to yeah. project or whatever i think you know where right. i'm getting that and oh, i know exactly what yeah you mean. And, and i don't feel that way anymore and i don't feel the need to win argument or discussions debates i i feel the need if i'm having one to present my side and hopefully i can impart some good Wisdom, but I also feel a responsibility to listen to the person with whom I'm having a conversation Absolutely. with as well. And they learn something. It, it, exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. And so and, my life yeah. today is about growth and, and growing and becoming a better dad. And, you know, I have grandkids yeah. now and, and all this right. stuff, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. That's and it's like one of the most important things. It's, you know, people always said, you, you, you know, when you have grandkids, it's the greatest thing ever. And I didn't have them for the long time. Right. And I'm just like, yeah, whatever, you know, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know i didn't i wasn't mean you know but i'm like right, right, you right. keep your beliefs and it's cool and i'm good right, right, but right. now that i have them i'm just like my god man right. this is the greatest right. thing ever right. you know right. so yeah sobriety is pretty cool well listen can we wrap it up with like a couple uh rapid fire just softball uh, questions it might hardball or softball just yeah. softball <laughs> stuff so let's see let me let me think off the top of my head uh if okay so and then we'll then we'll uh, tell everyone where we can find your art and, and on IG and stuff like that. But okay, so you're on a desert island. Let's go this one. So you ha you can bring two downloadable pieces of music, CD, either an album or a couple songs, but only two. And you're you're stranded for a year until you're coming back stateside or whatever. What would it be? I know where you're gonna go with one of them because it's the same. My favorite band too. But I don't know. I mean. <laughs> You know, this is where my fallibility shines. Yeah. <laughs> I put you in a corner here. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I mean, appetite for destruction. Oh, got, yes. I mean, is is has got to be one of them. For okay. Sure. And, you know, um, man. So, so we got GNR. GNR we, got, we need, we need and, one more. And, You know, the, the one that keeps coming to mind and uh, I have it marked because they just did a documentary on this album that I haven't watched it yet. Okay. Is uh, ACDC's Back in Black. Back is pretty yeah. iconic. Yeah. Pretty I mean, iconic. Those are like, I, that's probably the best. I mean, they've had, I mean, they sound the same, but they're awesome. Like they're 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 a great band, but that might be their best, in my opinion, their best yeah. album. And for Guns, that might be Appetite might be their best. I think Appetite's definitely the best for Guns. And I think, yeah. did you lift to that stuff? Is that like was mean? Guns like your go? Well, no, when you were working oh. out, was that like your go-to stuff? And I still go to that stuff. Heck yeah, I got it on my <laughs> lifting playlist too. I was a little Megadeth and stuff I like go just get me going, you know. But. Yeah. That's cool, man. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's go one more, and then uh, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, I know you play with a ton of great guys. Who is the besides Reggie White, and besides Peyton Manning? Because everyone listening, Tony has played with Peyton Manning against Reggie White, uh, on and on and on. Who is the best football player that you have either played against or with as a teammate? Besides Reggie White and Peyton Manning, as far as athletically. Um, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Best athlete and then best football player, and then we'll wrap. Then we'll call it good on. Um, the even on the of, offensive side of the ball. Um, you know, I was gonna. I, I'm going to mention somebody that doesn't qualify for your question, but then I'll give you a, the, okay. an answer that does qualify. One of the best, greatest athletes I've ever seen in my life in person, and I okay. played against him more than a couple times in college and in the pros, was Deion Sanders. Absolutely. Um, he glided across the field. He didn't Goodness run gracious, he what glided. an athlete. Um, so that wasn't a teammate, but I got to know him because we were at all the All-American things. and all Yeah, that. sure. He's and over at CU and, and working, we're working in the yeah. AD department with my sister, yeah. Right, which is, I think, a good thing. Yeah, uh, me too, me too. Uh, 
And then as far as, uh, you know, who is like a, like, as far as pure athleticism. Or maybe somebody I, who was really tough to stop, like a Bryce Pop. Did you ever play against Bryce Pop? Yeah, I did. Well, we practiced against him all the time. Yeah. And he went to like Northern Iowa. Like yeah, he went to a small school. school. Yeah. Bryce, Bryce was a great player. He was a very yeah. good player. Um, one of the one of the best athletes I've been around is really was in college. Um, and it was Andre Risen. Oh, Bad Moon Risen. What Risen. A, yeah. Uh, the Andre Risen was... He played basketball. He lettered in basketball and in football. He did, didn't he? I Michigan think I knew State. that. Yeah. And God, what um, a career he had too. You know, he, you know, he's had his struggles, but he's yeah. doing he's doing better, and it's like that's a testament to what kind of a man he is. Absolutely, um, and I, you know, I haven't heard anything negative about him in years, to be honest with no, you. I mean, he's. I think he's coaching in um, in Michigan. Um, I'm good. not sure at what level of college or high school, yeah. it doesn't matter. He's, he's giving back and absolutely. And he's probably doing what he loves to do. Um, Playing but football, as far as man, like shoot. to sit there and watch, like Andre was a great, but so was Lorenzo white or tailback. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. Andre was again, I don't know. It was just crazy. Some of the stuff, the catches I watched him do. It yeah. was crazy. I forgot um, Lorenzo white, uh, Michigan state. Yeah, we came in together. Uh, that yeah. we came in together at Michigan State, and I remember taking. I remember as a freshman, me and Lorenzo on the sidelines were playing Notre Dame at home. Okay, Mark Bavaro's their tight end. Oh, I think I think it was Steve Berline was their quarter. I'm not sure. Don't yeah. quote me on the Steve Berline part, but we're sitting there watching, and first quarter goes by. Second quarter, like second quarter is almost over. We're like halfway through the second quarter, and. Lorenzo hasn't touched the field and this uh. is our second game because we actually opened up at Colorado. Okay. Okay. Um, and, uh, I think we did beat them, but neither Lorenzo or I played. So to retain red shirt because gotcha. they just wanted okay. to see how the season would go. The starting tailback was going into his fourth year and he was a good tailback that we mm. had. Well, against Notre Dame, he wasn't doing so well. And Lorenzo, I'll never forget this. Lorenzo he, looked at me and he's and he just kind of like was like man, yeah. He's like I he goes, I could run all over this defense, and I thought to myself, wow, what a cocky kid this guy is. And he's a Lou good Holtz guy, team, right? I think they're national champs. One, you know, it could have been that. But yeah. know, I was thinking to myself, you know, because we were literally on a knee right beside each other on the sideline, uh -huh. and we had never played it down in college football. Yet. Yeah, and. All of a sudden, I hear George, a guy from our head coach, George Perlis, yell, Lorenzo, Lorenzo. And our guy's not hurt. And he goes, yeah. and I see him buckle up, and he goes, uh, you know, get in there. Now, what I didn't realize was Lorenzo was a five-star recruit running back out of Florida. Yeah. And Great all -American he was like one of the top recruits in the nation. And and I didn't yeah. know that coming from Canada. Well, actually, from the Oh, and George Perlis was head yeah. coach. Okay. Right. Gotcha. So George goes and puts him in his first run. He gets like 27 yards yeah. and does like two cuts that are just like, I'm like jaw drop. Yeah. And, and a human like, being really do this. I stuff? think yeah. he ended up with like 180 yards and only played two and a half quarters. Jeez. And, and I, and then I always think to that conversation of him going, man, I could like I run, could run right all over these defense. guys. And lo and behold, he did. So moving forward, did he keep the job or did, did they do yeah. a yeah. So Lorenzo became, did, huh? He should have won the Heisman minimum of one time, if not twice. Yeah. A Gosh. minimum of one time. One I mean he, he the one year he had like twenty two hundred yards rushing. Yeah. It's crazy. Know, and and didn't win the Heisman. It's like, well probably went up against like Barry Sanders or somebody like that. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No. He went uh the guy that won it that year, because he came out, even though we came in together. Yeah. I got redshirted. He didn't. So he went to the NFL a year, 88 draft. 88. Okay. But um, it, it may have been a quarterback. Tim, was it Tim Wright or, or the, was I want uh, Ismail, Rocket Ismail? It, it could have been or Tim Brown or Tim Brown. I meant yeah. been Tim Brown. Yeah. But, um, but man, Lorenzo, holy That's cool. smokes. He was, the guy was incredible. Yeah. And, Big and guy we, too. we'll keep in touch and, and great guy. No, no kidding, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like you know, once or twice a year, yeah. but um, just a phenomenal teammate. Very cool. Very cool. Well, man, Tony, it's been 
it's been fun, man. It's been informative. Awesome. I've loved talking with you. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, I'm really proud of uh, everything you're doing, man. Thank just uh, I love I love people who speak the truth. And uh, you are. Yeah. yeah. You, you think so, Brianna? I, yeah, I definitely I agree. It. Thank you. Brianna. Yeah, I think it's more very fresh. I like it. I just wish Brianna wouldn't have interrupted us so much. I <laughs> I know I should. <laughs> Next time, Brianna, this is going to be the Beau Payne Brianna I, show and you're going to host. I love learning, though. So listening to other people's perspectives, yeah. it's just sometimes it brings a light onto something that yeah. you may have been taught or that, you know, you just forgot or yeah. maybe it makes somebody, you know, it, it brings back the bravery of being able to voice what your beliefs are and yeah. not necessarily feel like people have to be judged or, you know, you have to feel like less than or yes. just because yeah. you're bringing something different to the table. And yeah. so I really enjoyed listening. So thank yeah. you. I <laughs> think it's that's awesome. Oh, go ahead, Tony. I well, and I was just going to say, uh, touching on what Brianna said, th a lot of people throw around the word courage. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't throw around the word bravery and, mm -hmm. and, you know, and a lot of, a lot, there's a lot, I know a lot of courageous people and I know some brave people. Yeah. And I see where you're getting at. Yeah. Bravery to me, in my opinion, when I see bravery, it's, it looks different than courage. It's, it is part of courage, but boy, it's like, it's next you level know type. that you're not yeah. going to be popular by doing something and yeah. you're still brave enough to stand on your foundation of what you believe in or whatever. And I think yep. it gets to a point where, you know, especially in sobriety, you know, we evolved to where this is, this is the truth and I'm just going to speak it. And if I get blowback, well, so be it, you know? Yeah. And, and it is brave, especially in, in the cancel culture we live in and, yeah. and yeah. people being, you know, so I, I agree a hundred percent, man. So I, well, I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the last hour and a half getting, I have getting to, to, I, to hear your, I appreciate, I yeah. appreciate you guys asking me and yeah, and man, definitely cool. fun. So before we go, um, you want to talk just briefly about your art and where we can find it and things yeah. like that, maybe um, social media. So the two best places are, um, my website, which is just my name, Tony okay. all one word. And Brianna then, will have all this in the show yeah. notes too. So, and then, um, on Instagram, um is like instagram's almost made for people yeah. in like photography or oh art. yeah yeah no we we so, follow each other and you have well, right. fantastic so, stuff yeah and, and that handle is at tony mandarich all one word okay um and then if you want to lean more on political stuff go to my twitter which is tony underscore mandarich okay there we go man i bet oh i know where i'm going i'm only i'm like a secret twitter guy i don't i only have like you know i've got you know, a handful of thousands of followers on IG yeah. and stuff like that. But I, I just kind of yeah. right I, under I, the radar on Twitter. You know? I was a member of Twitter since 2008 and I deleted my account after 2020. I had like yeah. almost 80,000 followers because I was like, so I was like, this is like, this is like stupidity. It, like, yeah. This is like, so, it, so I just deleted it. And then even when, when it was bought and changed names yeah. and stuff, um, I still didn't join until probably say recently. Yeah. Eight, nine months ago. And I'll state my opinion, but I'll, I'll also share a lot of opinions that are yeah. stated and, and I'll just do like a little one through like one liner on what I believe. There's a lot of sharing of Ted Nugent. I'll tell you that. Ah, <laughs> the Nuge. <laughs> ah, very, hey, uh, Detroit guy, I think. Yeah. Michigan yep. guy. What is um, man? Heck, Motor City Madman, absolutely. I think my favorite guy to come out of Detroit was Bob Seger. Yeah, he was awesome. This music, is so musically many, wise, but so many great musicians. Oh man, it. incredible. Um, okay, so so it's Tony underscore Mandrich on, on Twitter, Twitter or X or yeah. X, and then everything else is TonyMandrich dot com. Okay, website, or at Tony Mandrich is the Instagram. Okay, cool. Well, everybody listening out there, um, I have personally seen Tony's stuff. It is amazing, amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So we're going to wrap this up. Uh, Brianna, any parting shots for our guest today? No, nope. I, I just, I'm so glad that you were able to, you know, come on the show. And I think that you have a lot to say. And I think that the listeners probably hopefully walked away with something new and something that they can actually implement in their lives because it is literally so important, you know, your entire message. Yeah. So I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much. For having me. Beautifully said. I want to say thank you to uh, this conversation. Like I said, it, it organically went it the way it went, and I'm glad it went there. 
So am I. I really yeah. am. Absolutely. So Tony, oh, yeah. please come back All eventually. Right. We'll do it again. And uh, everybody listening out there, I hope everyone has uh, the cur- not only the, the courage, but as Tony so eloquently put, the bravery to live your absolute best life. So until then, I am out. <laughs>